done. You are Ali. Ali. لا تقوم الساعة حتى يقاتل المسلمون اليهود فيقتلهم المسلمون فيختبئ اليهود وراء الحجر والشجر فينادي الحجر والشجر قائلا يا مسلم يا عبد الله هذا يهودي خلفي تعالى فاقتل إلا الغرقد فإنه من شجر اليهود And you have no idea how much I hope Allah is going to curse you to the rest of your life. You are Ali. Ali. Welcome everybody. Hello. Thank you for joining in. I hope that my sound is loud and clear. Give me one if my sound is good, guys. Welcome everybody. Hello, Phil Herrera. Thank you for the confirmation. Hello, Hafsa, Peter the Wall, Sloppy Joe, Black Wax, Tenshi Cannon, Walter, Walter, sorry if I'm butchering your name, a medical school doctor. I think you're talking about Zachary Knight, right? <laughs> Peter the Wall, Tony, Armageddon News, Carolina, another dear sister and admin in Christ, Retna, Ravinder, Kahal, Georgie, Mr. Kish, hey brother, Tony King, how are you, my friend, welcome. Bojan, King Ra Ho, Revelation 22.13, welcome to, guys, Revelation 22.13 has an amazing YouTube channel, make sure to subscribe to his YouTube channel too, he always shares uh, videos of Christian apologists. Amazing grace, seek truth, your moon god Allah. Well, that's a really fitting name, your moon god Allah, because that's, you know, one of the <laughs> names that uh, actually make sense to today's topic, right? Welcome everybody, there are many of you, sorry if I didn't mention your name. God bless you, God bless your loved ones, welcome. We are live, brother, we are live. Now before we actually start guys, I want to ask you to pray with me in the name of our Lord and Savior, so our live stream is going to be blessed. Pray in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ with me. Dear Lord, bless our beloved audience. Lord, thank you for your grace and thank you for my lovely audience and subscribers who are always supporting us day in day out please lord bless them and bless their families god keep all of us healthy and safe in this new year father enfold us in your arms help us not to lean on our own understanding but in everything acknowledge you lord so that you can direct our words thoughts and actions always Give us a measure of your strength so that we might not give into discouragement, deception, taqiyya, makr, lies, or any doubt, Lord. Please help us on you in all our ways. Lord, I pray to you and ask you to shine your holy light on all of us, including the Muslims who might be in need and are seeking for the truth. Please, Lord, open their eyes so also they can be saved like we are saved through the blood of our Holy Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit and loosen my tongue today so I can speak the truth, with, truth without any error or any shame, Lord, because we should not be ashamed about the truth. Lord, give me wisdom and courage to do whatever needs to be done today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Welcome everybody on this live broadcast we will have the opportunity today to investigate if Islam is a pagan cult or not. Anything Muhammad said will be used against him in the court of law today. So I hope that Muhammad has Allah on his side as his personal attorney present to, during today's hearing <laughs> to defend him in the court of law. And last but not least, when I finish my teaching, we will have a nice Q&A session, as always, with our guests in the live chat. 
Hopefully we will have also Muslims who might have the courage and the knowledge to call us live on Skype for a nice and respectful discussion. My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. Let me open up my Skype so we can start. Now, before we start, guys, <clears throat> before we start, we always like to say the following. Tonight, we are going to witness the most anticipated match in the history of professional wrestling for the heavyweight championship of the world. Are you ready? Wrestling fans, are you ready? For the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, from the capital city of the United States of America, Washington, D.C., ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready. Are you ready? I hope you are ready because I am ready. That means you must be ready. <laughs> Let us start. Let us ready to rumble. Let's get ready. Guys, let's get ready. Let's do this. Let's get ready. Let's do this. Let's do this. Yay, someone is saying. Um, there's a guy, I think <clears throat> I missed your question last time. And he's asking the same question. Let me let me scroll back. I think it's brother or sister. C I N C I N he or she is asking at Rob Christian please before you start with your topic can you tell us who Al Mudil is well that's one of the 99 names of Allah and it's actually a very beautiful name of Allah very beautiful brother it means someone who is disgracing you someone who is dishonoring you a degrader someone who humiliates you so Allah loves to humiliate you. This is why it's one of the, his 99 beautiful names, brother. Right? So, Al Mudil, yes. Someone who loves to disgrace his own creation, brother. Disgracing you, humiliating you. So, Muslims love to worship a God, an idol, who loves to degrade his own creation, humiliate his own creation. That's one of the 99 names of Allah. Beautiful name, brother. I am receiving a call. Hmm. Just a second, guys. Let's see who this uh, caller is. I think it's the same guy who always steal uh, the Wi-Fi of his neighbors. If I'm not mistaken. Always calms me before we <laughs> actually start. My friend, you have no idea what the topic is going to be about. Why are you calling before we even start? Mm, I, I, uh, I think it was him. Hmm. Just a second. Call me back, call me back, my friend. Call me back. <clears throat> the guy who just called, call me back again. Because I have no idea who called me. I can't see it. It was on my other computer. So call me back and let us have a debate. Whoever you are. If you are a Christian, guys, please don't call now. We'll allow Christians to call when we finish. The teaching so when the live Q&A starts so if you're a Christian hold your horses don't call me only Muslims are allowed to call for now all right guys let us start today's topic Islamic paganism is Islam a pagan cult yes or no how many people think actually that Islam is a pagan cult give me a one if you think that Islam is a pagan cult give me a three if you think that Islam is not pagan. 
Now, let me see how many people are actually believe that Islam is a pagan. <clears throat> wow, many ones, man. Guys, really? Really? Hello World gives me a seven. Are you talking about doing a tawaf, circling the Kaaba seven times? Yeah, that's true. Number seven. Seven times going around the Kaaba, brother. Joe Jones has no opinion. He gives me a two. <clears throat> hmm. Seven Ajwa. <laughs> Muhammad Muhammad is asking me to accept this call. Well, call me, call me, my friend, call me. Okay, let me. Uh... Let's see. I'm calling you, man. Oh no. Uh oh. Muhammad Muhammad. Hello? Yeah, hello Muhammad Muhammad. Is one Muhammad okay. not enough? Why are you using two times Muhammad? Muhammad. Is yes. that your name? Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, okay. Welcome. Go okay, ahead. Okay. Your life in there. Go ahead. I have I have question. Let me finish. Huh? Will you fin will you let me finish? I'm listening. Okay. How many women visited the tomb? John 21, only Mary Magdalene. What? Matthew. How many women visited What has that to do with my today's topic? Is that something I wrong with you? I have a question you? for you. you no, I have like a that. question for you. Prove to me that Come Islam on. is not pagan. Come on. Listen, you, you, did he you, you, you say you, you're, you you're, let you're, me finish? Listen, listen. I know who you, you are. Said, you are the listen. same kid that I blocked last time. You are okay, that okay. Ahmed Khan. I know you. Okay, calm down. You, have, you calm cannot down. defend Islam. Rob, listen. Rob, no, 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 no. You calm down. Have, you are you my guest. You respect finish. yourself. No. You said you let No, me I'm finish. not going to let you finish because I have a Why topic today. I'm so I'm very scared of you, brother. You are so smart. You know oh Arabic better God. than me. Oh my no no no. Next time say oh my Allah. Don't listen, say oh my God. Listen, oh my when, Allah. When I finish my question, then I then you can ask me questions. No, no. You're Why going not? you're going to respect my to I'm not Come scared. On, I'm not scared. Who are you? you Who believe, are you to be you scared? Believe in your, brother, in your look. book. Ooh, I'm so scared you, of you, brother. I thought you were a true believer. My friend. Tell me and prove to me that Islam is not a pagan religion. I'll are you up? Are you up? If I are you run, up if I to run prove away to us? from your question, then I'm a fool. What has to, what has your question to do with my today's topic? I'll, Islam, I'll expose is you. There Answer it then. Is there something wrong with you? Is there something Listen, wrong with you? Call. We have a. Don't waste my time, kid. Muhammad, Muhammad. As if one name for Muhammad is not enough. Muhammad, Muhammad, brother. What's wrong with you, man? I'm, ha I'm having a topic. What has Mary Magdalene to do with my topic today, man? Can't you respect yourself? Can't you respect our live show? When you call, you start to call me without even having any clue what the topic is going to be about. You're going to call me and talk about Mary Magdalene. What has Mary Magdalene to do with your pagan cult, man? Yeah, it's the same cult. It's Ahmad Khan. We spanked him, all right? <clears throat> we already mentioned Al Mudil. Uh, yes, it's uh, it's one of the ninety nine names, right? And it means the dishonorer, the disgracer, the degrader. Allah, the humil he who loves to humil humiliate and degrade uh, his people, right? His creation, right? The dishonorer, dishonorer. So guys, let us start today's topic. Don't waste my time, kids. If you're a Muslim, if, if you actually respect yourself and you want to have a nice respectful discussion, don't talk, call me and talk about the Bible because that proves that you are a coward. You can't even defend your own religion, man, your own religion. Saying no, Al-Mudil not, does not mean a ma the maker. Maker is the deceiver, the maker. Khairul Makarin, the best of deceivers. Al Mudil is someone who disgrace you, humiliate you. That's what it means. Pay attention, guys, please. For the love of God, I already explained it two times. What has the word deceiver to do with someone who disgrading you? 
Maker is a deceiver, okay? Right? Who he is the maker, right? Maker, deception. That's what maker means. Muslims love to tell you he's the best of planners. No, it does not mean that you're liars. The ones who say that it means planners, those are the Pakistanis, the Indonesians, who have no clue about the Arabic word maker. Maker is a negative word. It means the deceiver. And we know that Allah is Satan and Muhammad is the agent of Satan. Let us start with our today's live show, guys. Paganism of Islam. Muslims love to tell you that Islam is an Abrahamic religion like Christianity, like Judaism, right? Well, that's not true because Christians and Jews don't go around the Kaaba. They don't kiss black stones. Actually, if you... In the Old Testament, if you used to worship idols, right? Remember the story of uh, Moses when he went to get the Ten Commandments on the tablets and he came down, he saw that his Israelites, his fellow Israelites started to worship uh, the golden calf, right? A cow, basically. What did God do to them? He destroyed them. And you dare to say, you dare to insult Abraham, saying that Abraham went and he uh, built a uh, Kaaba and he etched the black stones to the Kaaba. You are actually insulting Abraham. You are insulting Moses. You are insulting all the prophets who preached against paganism. Right? And God of Moses destroyed the Israelites who worshipped the golden calf, right? So you Muslims are actually insulting God of the Bible. You are insulting God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And you are assaulting Moses and Abraham. How dare you to call Islam an Abrahamic religion? It's certainly not an Abrahamic religion. Certainly not. God forbid. God forbid. It's an insult to our holy living God. Now, this is the route, guys. <clears throat> this is the route that Abraham took when God commanded him, right? To leave his tribe, his house, and to go to the land that God is going to show him, right? So he started in Ur and he went all the way up, right? He went to the west. All the way northwest, he went to Haran, and from that part, as you see here, his journey started. Right? He went all the way to Egypt and and then back to Hebron, this area basically, as you see. Where do you see Muslims? Wake up. Where do you see Abraham going south to uh, Mecca? Nowhere. This is basically Iraq right and this is the promised land he went to Egypt and then he came back here do you see it so Abraham has nothing to do with your Mecca Abraham has nothing to do with your Mecca you're actually insulting Abraham and you are insulting God of Abraham right right so how dare you to insult Abraham? Lie about Abraham. And uh, by the way, guys, do you remember the, uh, the city called Ur? The city of fire, guys? Muslims <laughs> and Muhammad are actually confused about this very historical fact. Abraham came from the city of fire. Now, Muhammad thought that the enemies of Abraham throw him in the fire. Remember the 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 salamander, right? The, 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 that reptile that was, according to Muhammad, uh, you know, trying to to make the fire even bigger. This is why you have to kill the lizards, the salamanders, the lizards. You know, fairy tales, man. So Muhammad thought that Abraham was thrown into the fire, but no. <laughs> 
<laughs> Abraham came from the city called fire. He was not thrown into the fire. He left the city called fire. <laughs> ah, man. Your prophet was confused, Muslims, actually. Your prophet was confused. Right? Your prophet was confused about Abraham and the real Abraham. Abraham had nothing to do with Mecca. Do you see it? Abraham actually stayed north. This is north. And Mecca and Medina are here, way down south, right? What a shame. Now, Islam says, or Muslims claim, Tawaf, which is circling, circling the Kaaba seven times, and sacrifice started with Abraham, as we mentioned earlier. And the Christians and Jews will respond by saying, dude, 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 what? What the heck? <laughs> yeah, circumambulation. Sorry if I'm butchering the name, guys. Sometimes my English, but cir circumambulation. I hope I'm not butchering the word. But I rather saying circling the Kaaba seven times, Tawaf, right? No, Abraham never circled the Kaaba seven times, let alone, as we showed you, Abraham never went to Kaaba uh, to build the Kaaba. He never went to Mecca. And the proof is in front of you. This is the historical route that Abraham took, that God of Abraham ordered him to do, right? He left Ur and he went to the promised land here, you know, and then it, the story continues how the Israelite actually started to enter the promised land. So no, the Jews and the Christians are like, dude, what? Where, where's your proof for that? And then the Muslim argument will be, you know, you Jews and Christians, you falsified your scriptures. The Jews and the Christians, they falsified the scriptures. And our counter attack is, or our counter response is, why would Jews and Christians even do that? I mean, God is ordering, right, is giving divine inspiration through the Holy Spirit, right? The Holy Spirit is moving men of God, prophets, to give prophecies, to give the message, uh, and they were inspired to, to write the Bible. And around 40 people wrote the Bible. So even our divine inspiration is in a different way because in Islam you have Allah that gives so-called divine inspiration through Jibreel, the demon. We know it's a demon who squeezed Muhammad three times Iqra, Iqra, in that cave, right? Always with an echo because you know when you're inside a cave like Hira, it's going to always be echo. So Iqra, <coughs> squeeze, squeeze, little bit squeeze like, you know, so maybe some Jews will come out of Muhammad and then still Muhammad does not understand. I mean, if Allah was truly God and Muhammad was a donkey, this donkey would have already started to read by now. I mean, why the, the squeezing? Why, you know, why the almost... Lord knows what that demon did to Muhammad in that cave, right? Allah knows best. Allahu alam what Jibreel, the so-called Jibreel, the demon Jibreel, what he did to Muhammad in that case. Hmm. I mean, squeezing, uh, choking him, sounds like, uh, you know, sexual abu abuse, sexual abuse. Sounds like sexual abuse, brother. Yeah, that demon, the same demon al abyad brother. And their argument, Muslim argument is, they removed the Kaaba from their religion, brother. And our response, our counter response is, that's impossible. I mean, why would we play with our scripture, man? Our holy scripture, why? Give me one good reason, man. Imagine. Imagine. <sighs> then our question is going to be, when and how? That the Jews and the Christians don't call me donkey, don't call me. It's uh, the same Ahmed uh, Khan guy. When and how did they remove the Kaaba from all their religious subgroups? When did, did that happen? When did we play with our scripture? Prove it to us, man. 
It's a very sincere question. When you are going to make a claim, Jews and Christians played with their scripture. When did that happen? How did that happen? Who did that actually? Who were the people who did that? You know, if we go to the Quran, guys, it's actually, you know, we can use the Quran against the Muslims who make that claim that Jews and Christians played with their scripture, corrupted the scripture. We can use that against you and your prophet in the court of law. And here is why. Quran chapter 10, Surah Yunus, Ayah 94. Chapter 10, Ayah 94. Take notes, guys. So, so says Allah. If thou, Muhammad, art in doubt, so if Muhammad is in doubt, guys, if he's doubt about his religion, about Islam, or the truth of Islam, eh, the so-called truth of Islam, or divine revelation, if thou art in doubt, Muhammad, regarding what we have sent down to thee, which is eh, divine, so-called divine revelation of the Quran, ask those who recite the book before thee. Who are those? The Jews and the Christians who received the Torah and the Injils before Muhammad, right guys? So imagine guys, why would Allah, if the Jews and the Christians, guys take notes, this is very important. Think with me here Muslims. If Jews and Christians corrupted their Torah and the Injil, as you Muslims claim, why would Allah tell Muhammad if he's in doubt, about the so-called divine revelation. Why would you command Muhammad, Allah, why are you commanding your prophet to go to the people of the book? If the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians, corrupted their scripture. Guys, did you, guys, did you catch it? Did you catch it? Give me one if you caught it. Give me a two if you did not caught it. I will explain it again. Okay, so you got it, right? So this is the one million dollar question, right? Why would Allah command Muhammad, if he's in doubt, to go to the people of the scripture, the Jews and the Christians, if the Jews and the Christians corrupted their scripture? That does not make sense, right? Why would you command your prophet, your final prophet, to go to the Jews and the Christians if he's in doubt? If the Jews and the Christians played with the scripture, right? As the Muslims claim. You removed and you played, right? With the Bible, brother. This does not make sense. And actually this ayah speak against you, destroy your claim because according to this ayah, Allah is a liar commanding his prophet to go to the people of the book who corrupted their scripture. That does not make sense. But Muslims actually don't think, they don't think when they make the claim, you Jews and Christians corrupted your scripture, which is false. False claim without any proof, without any backup. Only blah, blah, right? Only blah, blah. And if we go to the Hadith, if we go to Sunan Abi Dawood, Sunan Abi Dawood, hadith number 4,044.9. Let me give you the link also. So you can use it, bookmark it, save it, guys. Let us see what this hadith says. A group of Jews came and invited the Messenger of Allah, Muhammad, to Quf, right? To Quf. So he visited them in their school. They said, Abu al-Qasim, that was one of the nicknames of Muhammad, Abu al-Qasim. One of our men has committed fornication with a woman. Guys, the Jews were genius. The Jews were genius. Guys, the Jews are genius people. Even in the time of Muhammad. Why? Now, may, some people might ask, why Arab Christian are you saying this? Because the Jews actually invited Muhammad to set a trap for him, right? 
they invited him to set a trap for him and to prove actually that Muhammad believed in their Torah and he swore in the Torah. That means if Muhammad is swearing on the Torah and he believes in the Torah of the Jews, that means the Torah cannot be corrupted as the Muslims of today. The modern Muslims claim that the Torah is corrupted like the Injil. And here's the proof. The Jews were actually genius, bro. They were so very smart. Look what they did. So they said, you know, one of our Jewish family or, or, or Jewish tribe, one of the Jews of the, our tribe, he committed <clears throat> fornication with another Jewish woman. So pronounced judgment upon them. And they placed the Jews, look at these smart Jews, what they are doing. They placed the cushion for the messenger of Allah, Muhammad, who sat on it and said, so Muhammad said, bring the Torah. Why would you ask for the Torah if Muslims claim that the Torah is corrupted? Huh? Uh, Muhammad, Muhammad, if you want to talk about this topic, then you are welcome. If you want to talk about the Bible, no, then you are not welcome. If you are going to be sincere and you want to defend your prophet, call me. But if you're going to talk about the Bible, then there's no need for you to call me because you're going to waste my time, all right? So if you want to defend your prophet, go ahead. If you can prove to us how the Bible is corrupted, go ahead. I love to talk about that. But if you're going to change topic, then don't call me because I'm going to block this account too. I already blocked the Ahmad Khan uh, account because you're a kid. You can't even focus, right? So here the Jews actually set a trap for Muhammad, proved that Muhammad actually believed in the Torah. It was then brought for him, for Muhammad, the Torah was brought. He then took the cushion from uh, under him, from beneath him, right? And placed the Torah on that cushion saying, look what Muhammad said. He started to swear now. I believe in thee, says Muhammad, and in whom reveal thee. Wait, wait, wait. Why would Muhammad say, I believe in the Torah and in whom revealed thee, if the Torah is corrupted. Why would Muhammad say, I believe in you, the Torah, and in him who revealed you, if the Torah is corrupted, Muslims? Are you calling your prophet a liar? Muslims, speaking from cave, Hira, Hira. Are you, are you calling your prophet, prophet, a liar, liar? Clearly, Muhammad does not agree with you when you Muslims now of today, you hypocrite, you munafiqun, ya munafiqun, ya akhwan, you Muslims are nothing but hypocrite Muslims, you are calling your prophet a liar for saying, I believe in you, Torah, and in him who revealed you. Muhammad swore on the Torah, right? And then he cast <clears throat> judgment on them and they were stoned. You see? Man, man, man. How dare you Muslims? Calling yourself Muslims, but you are calling your prophet a liar when he said, I believe in you, the Torah, and in him who revealed you. Is your prophet a liar for swearing on the Torah? Tell me, Muslims. I, want, I really want to know. Are you calling your prophet a liar? Are you even a Muslim when you call your prophet a liar? What did Muhammad say, guys? Huh? What did Muhammad say? Let me look up the hadith for you. Uh, let's see, why did I put it? <clears throat> uh, 
I hope this is the right hadith that I want to show you. What did Muhammad say about people who lie about him, guys? Narrated Anas, the fact which stops me from narrating a great number of hadiths to you is that the Prophet said, whoever tells a lie against me intentionally, then surely let him occupy his seat in hellfire. This is Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 108. Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 108. So Muslims, if you lie about your Prophet, as you love to do that, because your Prophet actually believed in the Torah, that means according to your own Prophet, because you are lying against him, you are lying about your Prophet, you are going to burn in hellfire. You just go and take your seat and stay in hellfire forever. Because your Prophet actually believed in the Torah. And even as we showed you, Allah commanded Muhammad to go to the people of the book. Who are the people of the book? The Jews and the Christians. The Christians who were reading from the Gospel and the Jews who were reading from the Torah, right? Why would you send your Prophet if he's in doubt? And why would Muhammad be in doubt in the first place? Why would Muhammad be in doubt? That doesn't make sense. If you're a Prophet, why would you be in doubt? Right? Anyway, let it go, Rob Christian. Let it go, brother. Then go ask the people of the book before thee. Do you see? Even Allah believed that the Torah is uncorrupted and the Injil is uncorrupted. Muhammad himself believed in the Torah. And again, for the third time, if we go to chapter 5, ayah 47, it says, and let the people of the gospel, who are the people of the gospel, guys? Again, who are the people of the gospel? To all my audience who are listening right here, right now, who are the people of the gospel again? The Christians, thank you. So, the Christians must judge by what Allah has revealed in the gospel, in the Injil. And whoever does not judge by what Allah Allah has revealed in the gospel, then it is those who are the deviantly disobedient. So not only is Allah commanding in the Quran the Christians to judge by the gospel, I mean why would Allah command the Christians, right? Why would Allah command the Christians to judge by the gospel if the gospel is corrupted according to Muslims of today? Right? Why would Allah command the people of the gospel, i.e. the Christians, to judge by the gospel if the gospel is corrupted? Uh, carry on, no. I challenge any Muslim to show me where the Quran says that the Bible is corrupted. I challenge any Muslim to show me from the Quran where it says that the Torah is corrupted and where it says that the gospel is corrupted. Actually, Allah over and over and over actually shows us and also as we mentioned in the hadith that the Torah and the Gospel are definitely not corrupted. It's not in there, exactly wrong cross. Nowhere in the Quran says it that the Bible is corrupted. Muslims have to assume. You know why Muslims have to assume? Because our Holy Bible actually spanks Muhammad, it completely destroys Muhammad's teaching, our holy Bible that is. This is why, you know, when Muslims started to read, especially the scholars of Islam, they started to read the Bible, they thought, hmm, wait a second, if the Bible is spanking our prophet, then that we have to assume that the Bible must be corrupted because the teaching of the Bible completely destroys the Quran. It destroys Muhammad, right? It destroys the teaching of our Holy Prophet, right? So Allah wants to have a cake and eat it too. Commanding the Christians to judge by the gospel. But if we must judge by the gospel, we have to reject Muhammad we have to call him a fake prophet, we have to call him a liar and a deceiver, and we have to reject Islam, because our gospel teaches clearly that Jesus 
is the eternal word of God who came in the flesh and died on the cross and resurrected on the third day, which Islam completely rejects. But if we just judge by the gospel, we have to reject Muhammad as you see. And if we don't judge by the gospel, Allah is saying, you are a disobedient, you are a kafir, you are a deviant, right? You see here, Muhammad in this ayah dropped another nuclear bomb. If I was a Muslim and I would have read this ayah, I would have left Islam. If I was sincere, guys, if I was a sincere Muslim, God forbid, I'm not a Muslim. I am, I've never been a Muslim. But if I was a Muslim and I would have read this ayah, and I, then I should have started to think, wait, Allah, you are commanding the Christians to judge by the gospel. And if, you, if they don't ju judge by the gospel and believe in the gospel, that, that means they are disbelievers, they are disobedient, they are deviant. But wait, if I read the gospel, I see that the gospel is rejecting, totally contradicting the teaching of Muhammad. That means Allah is actually a hypocrite. Allah is a hypocrite. Or Allah does not exist and Muhammad is actually fabricating ayahs. And that's the most important thing to consider. Muhammad must be fabricating ayahs, spanking himself, contradicting himself over and over and over, telling Jews and Christians to go and <laughs> actually judge by their scriptures, but their scriptures are contradicting Muhammad. That means I must leave Islam because Islam does not make sense. Right? Hello world changer, welcome my friend. For the people who just joined, Today's topic is <clears throat> pagan Islam, the paganism of Islam. And we are showing you how Muhammad is actually nothing but a prophet who loved to contradict himself. And Muslims now in 2020 are in trouble because of Muhammad's teaching in the Quran. Uh, Nate is, no, the black stone did not steal the clothes of Moses. You're wrong, my friend. Please don't act like Muslims. When Muslims read our Bible, our scripture, they misquote it. That's not what the Hadith say. It's, it's talking about different stones who stole the clothes of Moses. That was not the black stone, okay? So be, be specific, my friend. Don't misquote any, okay? Don't misquote any. No. Christian prince never said black stones. Other stones <laughs> stole the clothes of Moses. Okay? Not the black stones. Okay? Please, my friend, don't do what Muslims do. Okay? Don't do. At least when we quote Muslim scripture, we have to be fair to the scripture. I'm not going to read it differently. As you see, I'm reading it as it is. I'm not putting my words. I read it as, read it, as it is. All right? Yeah, Islam is all about stones, man. Muhammad loved to talk about stones. That's why. Guys, what about... <clears throat> what about... Ramadan? Right? Uh, Nate is welcome. If, uh, you're a Turkish Christian. Okay, welcome, my friend. <clears throat> but you need to understand, brother... Nate is, Nate is, sorry if I'm butchering your name. You need to understand, we Christians, when we talk about Islam, when we talk about the Quran Hadith, we don't misquote. We are not Muslims. Muslims, when they, when they talk about our Bible, debate us about our Bible, they love to misquote it. Read it out of context. Read only a small part of a verse. Reject the entire verse or the entire chapter. Lying about our scripture like Ahmadidat did. We are not Ahmadidat. We are not Muslims. We don't do that to any scripture. All right, guys? We read it as it is. We don't add. We don't remove. We read it as it is. If I would have ever done that, guys, I would love to be corrected right here, right now. If you ever catch me doing what Muslims do, I would love you to call me and rebuke me and refute me. For Look, Rob Christian, you are acting like the Muslims. 
I would love to be corrected if I am doing what Muslims do. All right? Always make sure when a Muslim talks about the Bible, go check it out yourself. See if he's misquoting it. Maybe he's taking some part out of it, right? Don't be like the Muslims, guys. And never allow them to play with our scripture. Always make sure when they quote scripture of the Bible, always go check it yourself. Make sure to read the entire chapter and see if they are actually taking part out of it or not, right? We're not Muslims. About Ramadan, what about it, Rob Christian? Well, has Ramadan pagan roots? Well, yes, it does, right? Ramadan has pagan roots, and here is why. If we go to the Quran, guys, if we go to the Quran, chapter 2, Surah Al Baqarah, chapter of the cow. Right, the cow, Al Baqarah, Ayah 185. We can read the following Ramadan is the month in which the Quran was revealed as guidance to men and clear proof of the guidance and criterion. So, when you see the new moon, you should fast the whole month. Wait a second. The word here, Shahru, Shahru Ramadan, right? The month. The word Shahr or Shahru does not mean month originally. It did not mean month. And here is the proof. You see the new moon here? Do you see it, guys? Do you see the, 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 the three words here? The new moon, do you see it? This is the same word. Do you see it? Al Shahr. Al Shahr. So you see here it's translated as month. Do you see it? Shahr, which means here month. But this is the same word. Right? Here it means new moon. Uh oh. Bro, are you saying that Ramadan is celebrating of the new moon? Yes, celebrating the moon idol, right? Celebrating the moon idol. So originally, what I'm trying to tell you or teach you guys is the following. The word al shahr or shahr, shahru, it means the moon, right? So it's celebrating, is the celebration, Ramadan is the celebration of the moon, the new moon to be specific. Did you catch it, guys? So, Islam is nothing but a pagan cult celebrating the moon idol. The moon. The moon idol, right? So, Arab Muslims change it later to the month. So, this word, Ashar, which originally meant or means the moon, they changed it to month. Shahr became the month. And here is my proof. The proof is in front of you. This is the word, right? The month, the new moon, that's what it originally meant. So Islam is nothing but a moon cult. This is why you still see, you know, the crescent moon on top of the masjids, right? On the mosques, on top of the mosques. Right, Muslims? Because you are actually worshippers of the moon idol, Allah, right? That's why. Now some people are asking me questions in the chat. Guys, I can't teach. I can't teach and read comments. Okay, so if you have a really important question that you want to ask me, write it down so you will not forget it and ask me later when I finish my teaching. All right, guys? Liar! Good Abdul. If I am a liar, I challenge you to call me. I'm live on air. Call me on my Skype live. And I really hope that you have the knowledge and the courage to call me and refute me. Because to be honest with you, I am tired of destroying your sick 
man-made cult, your sex cult, your cult that is nothing but about worshipping the moon idol, Allah, the moon idol, I am tired of it. But as long as you Muslims cannot refute me, and I'm doing this for 15 years now, as long you cannot do it, I'll continue doing what I do. If you can refute me, I made a vow. Guys, I took a vow. If a Muslim can refute me, I'll close my YouTube channel and I will stop teaching and debating Muslims. I took a vow. We will see you on Yom Al Qiyamah. <laughs> guys, this guy just said, I will see you or we will see you on Judgment Day, right? Well, my friend, Basically what you are saying, good Abdul, you are saying that you are going to destroy all the Jews, you are going to kill all the Jews, else the last hour will not be established, right? Is that what you are saying? Okay, make sure to kill all the Jews, Muslims, kill all the Jews, and finally Allah then can establish the last hour. Right? Right? Make sure to even become much worse than Hitler, kill all the Jews, and then Allah finally will establish Judgment Day. Right? You are bad Abdul, you are not a good Abdul, you are a bad Abdul. You want Judgment Day to happen, but first, before you <laughs> can establish that, before Allah can establish the last hour in Islam, all the Jews must go. Even the trees and the stones will talk. There is a Jew behind me. Come and kill him. Yeah, and that's exactly what they believe. Exactly wrong cross. Muslims must kill all the Jews, else judgment day will not be established by Allah. What a lovely, what a lovely, peaceful, I mean, pieces cult, right? Peaceful, I mean, peace is called. Hack them to pieces, brother. Else, judgment day will not be established. Those are the Jews. Always the Jews. Brother, what about these black stones? What about the black stones, brother? <clears throat> Anyone, uh, <clears throat> Natus, if you have a question, please. Like I said, respect me, respect yourself, write your question down and I will try to answer it when I'm done teaching. I can't teach and answer questions in the chat at the same time, please, for the love of God. If you are a Christian, don't act like Muslims. Write your question down and ask me when the live Q&A session starts after the teaching. We are here to answer questions, don't worry, alright? I hope this is a Muslim. Hello? Let me turn the volume down. What? Hello? <laughs> Hello? Yes! Is this, is this Jibreel? Hello? Jibreel, yes. is that you? Okay. Waste of time. Jibril, was that you? I think that was divine revelation from Jibril, brother. Uh, Jibril almost choked me, bro. I think that was Jibril who wanted to choke me. Like Iqra, Iqra. Hello? Hello? Hey, daddy. Ultimate donkey, that's you. Uh, I'm ultimate daddy. Ultimate donkey. I have no time for you, ultimate daddy. Daddy donkey. Ultimate shirk. I, I, you know, I have, I have my own personal uh, fans, man. It seems fans, bro. You have fans. Yeah, I have fans, bro. I have uh, stalkers. Yeah, ultimate shirk, you are an apostate, exactly. Uh, guys, what about the black stones? Black stones are actually meteorites, right? It was a meteorite. <sighs> like many other meteorites that you can see sometimes burning in the sky, right? 
a burned meteorite, right? Because when a meteorite enters basically the sky, it starts to burn because of the friction, right? So the black stone, guys, it was actually a stone. It used to be a stone in as the size of a football, okay? A size of a football. But the Karamita stole that stone from Mecca, right? The enemies of Islam, they stole the stone for more than 20 years. Muslim sources even say 22 years. They destroyed that, the black stone because this is why it's called black stone, right? And not stones because it was one big stone in the size of a football. And the leader of the Karamita destroyed the stone and made it, you know, only a small tiny pieces are left. This is what they, why they are not calling it black stones. It used to be a big rock, right? Size of a football. So, you know, like many meteorites, it came down, it, it burned in our atmosphere and it came, you know, like many meteorites, many meteorites. Are you saying Muslims that we should worship every meteorite that entered our atmosphere, we should pick it up and start to kiss it and lick it? Is that what you're saying, Muslims? Every meteorite that enters our atmosphere, we should kiss it and lick it and bow down to it and build a Kaaba and place it in the corner of it. Is that what you're saying, Muslims? But brother, it's from heaven, brother. It's from Jannah, brother. It's from the Arsh, it's, it's from, it came from the Arsh, it's, it came from the throne of Allah, brother. Stone coming from the throne of Allah, prove it, brother. Well, we can't prove it, brother, we have to believe in it, because our, our Prophet kissed it, hugged it, and licked it, brother. We have to follow the Sunnah of our Prophet, this is why we kiss it, and lick it, and bow towards it. Right? But we know, it's nothing but a stone, like many stones, and the Arabs, the pagan Arabs, whenever a meteorite came down, they pick it and start to worship it. The black stones were not the last stones that used to be worshipped. There was, there were many Kaabas. There was not only one Kaaba, there were many Kaabas, right? Many Kaabas existed, not only the Kaaba of Mecca. Many black stones. Right? Now guys, <clears throat> I wanted to share this hadith with you from Musnad Ahmad. Don't call me. You, you had your chance, Muhammad, Muhammad or Ahmad Khan. You had your chance. Call me another time and when you call me, from on, if you want to debate me, debate me on the topic. I will not allow you to... Stop calling you donkey. Let me block this. Let me block this kid. You're asking to be blocked, man. You are asking to be blocked. What a donkey, man. Even a donkey will understand Right? Even a donkey will understand. From one, if you tell him once, he will understand. But Muslims, you know. Anyway. <laughs> Musnad Ahmed, hadith number 2835. Abu Muhammad narrated to us, reported by Ibn Abbas, the cousin of Muhammad. He said, the messenger of Allah approached until he entered the mosque. Then he received the corner. Then he walked to the black corner. The Quraysh said they were not pleased with just walking. What is walking? You know, walking around the Kaaba seven times. This is a horrible translation, I know, but it is what it is. They would rather jump like antelopes. So he, Muhammad, did likewise three times. So it was not enough to only walk around the Kaaba, guys. They jumped like animals around the Kaaba three times. And Muhammad did the same. Imagine guys, picture this. Muhammad is going around the Kaaba. Let me see if I can, yeah. This is the Kaaba guys, this is Muhammad. 
Sorry, I, I'm not really good with, uh, like uh, Christian Prince. You know, I don't have the artistic abilities that Christian Prince has when he draws. So imagine this is Muhammad going seven times around the Kaaba. Three times he start to jump like a monkey. Jump, jump around, brother, jump around. Three times, jump around, jump around, jump, 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 jump around, jump, jump. Yeah, that's what Muhammad actually did. So he did the same like the pagan Quraysh, same pagan rituals, right? Same pagan rituals like the Quraysh. He started to jump seven, three times out of the seven times, jumping like an animal, like an antelope right around the Kaaba jump around like a bunny rabbit yeah jump you know picture him to be an animal jumping like an antelope or like a bunny bunny rabbit and as we mentioned you can find this hadith in 20 hadith number 2835 and Musnad Ahmed right jump 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 around clearly islam is not a pagan reli religion right muslims why would muhammad copy the pagan Quraysh of mecca right his own tribe his own family copying them while he claims to be god a prophet of god who muslims claim that it's the same god of abraham isaac and jacob why would you copy pagans Jumping around like an animal or three times around the Kaaba to complete the seven times tawaf. This is tawaf guys when you know when you want to know what tawaf is is actually circling The Kaaba right seven times and three times out of seven Jumping like an animal right? As I just put it in the text um, Tim Nick, I really tried with this guy, but this guy only talks about the Bible, right? My, the Bible has nothing to do with my today's topic, right? He can only attack the Bible. Well, I'm not going to waste my time with any Muslim who cannot even respect himself and want to change the topic, you know? I'll give you a chance. I gave this guy a chance and he wants to talk about a different topic. He has no idea what topic of today is. He just calls to talk about the Bible. What has the Bible to do with my today's topic? My today's topic is pagan Islam. You have the courage and the knowledge to refute me on that? Welcome. You are allowed to call us live on air. My Skype ID is DROP Christian. If you are a Muslim who think who can refute me about this topic, please do. I love to be refuted you know I'm disgusted of Islam to be honest with you I'm done with this disgusting cult but unfortunately guys you know there are still many Muslims and we need to help those poor victims the victims of this Arab cult the victims of this man who created Islam Muhammad to help them out I'm not doing this for myself, guys, I truly, truly, I tell you, if I was doing this for myself, I would have not stayed a second with you guys. Because, you know, I'm wasting my personal time, right? I have a family, I have a pregnant wife, right? Do you think I don't have better time to spend? But, you know, God gave me this gift to teach and destroy and expose Islam so this is why I'm doing it. I'm not doing this for myself guys truly I have better time to do with my personal time right but really I'm using this to help those poor Muslims we love Muslims we love you Muslims this is why we are doing this we are, we are not doing this because we hate you we don't hate any Muslim right thank you so much Shirley thank you so much God bless you too, guys. Thank you. Yeah. So, it is what it is, guys. Somebody has to do it. And if this is the plan of God giving me this gift, then I will continue as long as I 
have the time and health to destroy this cult. Right? So as you see, Muhammad was copying the pagans of Mecca, the Quraysh, his own tribe, jumping like an antelope, like a bunny rabbit, around the Kaaba, doing pagan rituals. This is your hadith, this is not my hadith. Go check it out if you don't believe me. Now guys, another disaster here in the hadith. Another one, Rob Christian, yes. This is a Sahih Hadith, right? Sahih Hadith, let me make this bigger. Sahih Hadith, brother, yes. From Jama Turmidi, Hadith number 871. Let me give you the link. Use this because this is really damaging Hadith. And I'm going to show you also the Taqiyah and the translation. All right? Let me scroll back. Zaid bin Uthay said, I asked Ali, what is it that you were sent with? He said, with four things, none will be admitted into paradise except for the soul that is a Muslim. Right? None is to perform tawaf around the house while naked. What, what, what? What are you saying? No one is permitted, no one is allowed to go naked around the Kaaba anymore, doing tawaf, going circle seven times, as we mentioned, seven times around the Kaaba, jumping at least three times like an antelope. Naked? Why naked? Well, naked because Muslims and pagans, right? Muslims and pagans used to go naked around the Kaaba. Naked. And not only naked guys, doing all of kind of filthy sexual actions. Women used to, you know, rub <clears throat> their <clears throat> with menstrual blood on the pagan black stone of Allah, the pagan idol, right? You know, mixing their blood with male semen, putting it on the stone, right? for fertility wishes, right? If you want to become a pregnant woman, the pagans used to <clears throat> put their menstrual blood and the semen of the man on the black stones. This is why it became black. Fertility ritual, exactly, Tony. You hit the jackpot. And this is the golden calf of Islam. Exactly, Armageddon. You Christians are sharp today, man. What's? Did you eat your seven ajwa again, guys? You're really sharp, bro. All right? All right, guys? You're really sharp. You must have eaten your seven ajwa and you became, you know, very focused, immune for black poison. Sorry, for black magic and poison. And because you are Christians, you get immune, you get the extra. You become immune for taqiyah, brother. Like I always do. I always make sure, before I do a live show or a video, I always eat my seven ajwa. So Muslims and pagans used to go naked, doing tawaf around the Kaaba seven times. And three times out of the seven times, jumping like antelopes and Muhammad followed what the pagans were doing. So do you see guys, can we conclude that doing tawaf is nothing but a pagan ritual? A pagan ritual that the pagan of Mecca used to do and Muhammad copy it and put it in Islam. Right? How dare you to call Islam a Abrahamic religion? How dare you? to insult our holy God and our holy prophets like Abraham. How dare you Muslims? Shame on you. How dare you to call Islam an Abrahamic religion? How dare you? Naked, filthy rituals around the Kaaba and you claim this is from God? 
What a shame. Let's see who is calling. Yes, hello? Be a man one time. One time. Be a man. One hey, hey, okay. Listen, listen, one ultimate, time. ultimate shirk, listen. Are you a follower of Rashad Khalifa? Are you a follower of Rashad Khalifa? I'm on your topic. Oh, now you want to change topic? No, because you you, you you are always scared. You are always scared. You are too scared. You are too ashamed. You no, are. do you see now what you kind of hypocrite topic. you Let's are? No, no. Before we Let's go there, are you a follower? Topic. Are you a follower of Rashad no. Khalifa? Yes or no? I said, let us be on your topic. See, you coward. He will never ever admit it. He will never admit that he's a follower of Rashad Khalifa. Don't call me, don't call me. Don't call me. Donkey. He's too ashamed. He's too ashamed. This ultimate shirk who has more than 99 names, more than 99 names of Allah himself, he is too scared to admit that he is a follower of Rashad Khalifa. Um, Goat Aid Aisha, you know, we gave this guy many chances in the past. You know, I don't want to waste my time with these wannabe Muslims. He's not even a Muslim, man. He's a follower of Rashad Khalifa. We know what Muslims did to Rashad Khalifa in the 90s. They stabbed him with a knife in a mosque because he was a fake Muslim. He, he said he's, he's the final messenger after Muhammad and he even called the Quran corrupted. And he even said that parts of the Quran are about him. And this guy is a follower of Rashad Khalifa. He does not want to admit it, right? This is why he will never answer my question. Are you a follower of Rashad Khalifa? As long as you don't want to say it, I will keep continuing just to humiliate you in front of everybody. Right? You're a coward, you're a hypocrite. And I'll continue as long as you keep calling me, you keep making new accounts, I will keep asking you the same question just to show everybody what kind of hypocrite munafiq you are you want to be muslim you're going to be stabbed on the streets of mecca and medina if they know that you are a follower of rashad khalifa like they stabbed your master rashad khalifa anyway so you see guys muslims used to go together with the pagans naked doing tawaf naked around the kaaba doing all kind of sexual activities right and this is why you see this is why the black stone that are only you know small pieces are left the black stuff that you see here guys this is wax this is wax that is holding this tiny pieces of stones together right the black stuff that you see here this is wax, you know, to keep those stones in their in their places. And you see, it looks like a female part, right? A fijay, <clears throat> a vagina, right? It resembles the filthy actions that the pagan women did to the black stones. This is why it looks like a vagina. So when they Muslims today kiss it, they are actually kissing a, a black vagina. Even the word Hajj, guys. What about the word Hajj, Rob Christian? Even the word Hajj, right? Pilgrimage, that's what they call it. Hajj, the pilgrimage to Mecca. Comes from the word Hak, Hak. Hak, right? Because it was IE, came from Hak, it means rubbing. Al Ihtikak. Hak al Ihtikak. Rubbing. Rubbing of menstrual blood on the black stones. This is where Hajj comes from, from the word Hak. Ihtikak, right? Rubbing the menstrual blood of women on the black stones for fertility, fertility desires, right? Hence why the shape of the black stone that looks like a woman's private part, female private part. Do you see it? Hack, hack. Rubbing, right? Tikak, rubbing. 
الاحتكاك rubbing of menstrual blood on a black stone brother let it sink in muslims now you understand where the word hajj come from guys this is where the word hajj comes from hak i.e. al ihtikak of the menstrual blood of on the black stone menstrual blood brother try to picture this in front of you and don't start to vomit or get disgusted of the idea that dead blood of women that have their menstruation their monthly period collecting the blood and putting it on the black stones rubbing it with their fingers Ugh. <coughs> Try not to vomit, guys. <laughs> Nasty. And you call this a religion from God? Muslims. Copy this. Make a screenshot, guys. To learn where the word Hajj comes from. It comes from Hak. You know, Hak al ihtikak Robbing. Robbing. Menstrual blood of women on a black stone. There, that's where Hajj comes from. The word Hajj, Hak, Ahtikak. All right. It is what it is, guys. This is Islam 101. What can we do? I have a much more damaging hadith, bro. Go easy on Muhammad, man. What's wrong with you, Rob Christian? Well, it is what it is, guys. We are not going to be political correct with Muhammad here and his man-made sex cult. Nothing but sex. Everything is about sex in Islam. This is Sahih al-Bukhari. Right? Sahih. 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 Al-Bukhari. Hadith number 1605. Let me give you the link. And our brother, our dear admin, Phil Herrera, is always posting the links, guys. If you still want them or you miss them, make sure... When the live show is over, wait one hour or so, and brother, our dear admin, amazing brother, he's always providing the sources and the links that you see on our screen in the comment section under our videos. All right, guys? Don't worry, they're always there. Or you can just simply click on the live chat, ready to know? It takes YouTube to process the live chat. You can replay the live chat that you are now typing in. And you can also find the links there. So you have two options, guys. Okay, let me read the hadith, guys. Narrated Zayd bin Aslam from his father who said, Omar bin Al-Khattab. This is the same guy who became a caliph, right? Omar, the Omar. Right? The Omar addressed the corner, the black stone saying, by Allah, I know that you are nothing but a stone. You are a stone. He's talking about the black stones, right? Look what Omar is saying. I know that you are a stone and neither can benefit or nor harm anyone. That's what Omar is saying. Had I not seen the prophet touching and kissing and licking you, <laughs> keep kissing it, brother. Had I not seen the Prophet doing it, Muhammad doing it, like a pagan, right, doing what the pagans did before him, I would never have touched and kissed you. Look the honesty of Omar. He knows this is a stone. What can a stone do to me? He knew it was pagan, exactly. But here comes the damaging part, guys. Watch. Guys, please, for the love of God, you need to take this and write this down, copy it, do what you have to do. Here comes the most devastating part. I'm going to show you the taqiyya. Then he kissed it and said, so Omar kissed it, like his prophet, there is no reason for us to do ramal in tawaf, except that we wanted to show off before the pagans. Now here is the taqiyya. This is not about showing off. This is using deception with the pagans, guys. You know, because at that time, you need to understand that Muhammad had no army, right? When he was in Mecca, 
he had no army to attack the pagans of Mecca, right? He was outnumbered. He had no army yet. He did not leave Mecca yet to go to Medina and gather himself an army of thugs, right? Muhammad was weak. He had to use taqiyah, deception, makr, like is Allah, khayrul makirin, the best of all deceivers, using the makr of Allah, because he had no army like this. So he used taqiyah, deception, to the pagans, right? Acting like the pagans. Do you see it? So this is false translation. It's not show off. It's actually using taqiyah, using deception against the pagans, acting like pagan. So when he's with pagans, he's acting like a pagan. Can you imagine, guys? Doing the tawaf of pagans. Do you see how the tawaf was nothing but a pagan cult? Kissing black stones was nothing but a pagan cult. The pagans used to do what he did. Do you see it? And now Allah has destroyed them. Wait, wait, wait. Why is Allah not destroying all Muhammad and Omar who are doing the same pagan rituals, kissing the black stone, touching and kissing it? Why is Allah destroying the poor pagans? Right? Why is Allah destroying the poor pagans where are, while they are kissing the black stones and hugging and, 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 and doing all kinds of things to the black stones? Putting their menstrual blood on it. Right? You see the logic here, guys? And Muhammad is using taqiyya, trying to please the pagans. Because the pagans were much stronger than Muhammad at that moment. When he st was still in Mecca. Right? Taqiyya, deception, brother. As long as you are outnumbered, you're going to act like them. Sit down, sit down and act like them. Right? So Muhammad became a pagan when he was surrounded by pagans, doing the same rituals, right, like them. And then Omar added, guys, Omar added, nevertheless, the Prophet did that and we did not want to leave it. <laughs> I mean, guys, 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 think with me here. Here is the one million dollar question. If the pagans used to kiss black stones, if the pagans used to go around the Kaaba seven times, and as we mentioned to you, jumping three times out of seven, like an antelope, like a bunny around the Kaaba, right? Why would you not want to leave this pagan ritual? The prophet did that and we did not want to leave it. Doing what? Doing the same as the pagans. You are saying there is only one Allah. Then why are you taking what the pagans are doing? Why don't you want to leave these pagan rituals, man? Why don't you want to drop the pagan rituals that the pagans did and still call Islam a monotheistic religion? This is hypocrisy from Muhammad. Hypocrisy 101. Huh? 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 Muslims, why are you not thinking here? The proof is in front of you. Muhammad is doing taqiyah, copying the, what the pagans are doing. Kissing the black stones like the pagans. Circling the Kaaba seven times and jumping three times around it, right? And why don't you want to leave this pagan cult? Why are you not leaving this pagan rituals? Because Muhammad loved it. Right? Muhammad loved to copy the, the pagans. Like he loved to copy the Jews and the Christians. Copy-paste religion. From tiny pieces of, of there, tiny pieces of here, and then suddenly you have a new religion. A mixture of many religions. That's what Islam is. A mixture of many religions. Someone is saying, Malaysian prophet is saying, what Rob? Muslim think? Huh? No way. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, if you actually thought, uh, used your brains, then you would have left Islam a long time ago, Muslims. Because proof is in front of you that Islam was nothing but a pagan cult in the time of Muhammad. And you are still pagans after 1400 years.
Why don't you want to leave this pagan rituals? You tell me, Muslims. Keep acting like pagans, Muslims, and claiming that Islam is a monotheistic religion, which is false, by the way. And why, were, why would Allah allow anyone to steal his black stone, cut it into tiny pieces, more than 90% of the original black stone is missing, gone, right? Because the leader of the Karamita, right? The leader of the Karamita, he stole the black stone, he cut it in tiny pieces, and he even when he was in Mecca, destroying Mecca, he even challenged Allah, where are you? Where is your army of birds, right? If we go to the Quran, guys, if we go to the Quran, chapter 105, are you still with me, guys? If we go to chapter 105, Surah Al-Fil, the elephant, the ayah reads like this, Have you not seen how your Lord Allah dealt with the people of the elephants? Right? And he sent an army of birds, small tiny birds with baked clay, <laughs> throwing big small stones at the elephant army. I mean, what would, what would a tiny stone do against an elephant army? Do you know how strong an elephant is? Have you any idea how thick the skin of an elephant is? Have you any idea how thick the skin of an elephant is? What would a tiny stone do against an elephant, man? Maybe it will tickle him. That stone that is going to be dropped on an elephant, it will tickle him. <laughs> you see, you see the, the elephant smiling. <laughs> I'm getting tickled, brother, by tiny stones, brother. And tiny, you know, elephants, elephants in a hot desert like Mecca, bro, just one elephant, just one elephant needs tons and tons of water, right? Gallons and gallons of water. What about an entire army in a desert, an entire army of elephants in a hot desert like Mecca? That doesn't make sense, man. There's hardly water in Mecca, bro. There's hardly water in Mecca. Do you know how much water an army of elephants needs? Yeah, this, this is nothing but a fairy tale, brother. Fairy tale, fairy tale. That's what it is, right? Where is Allah when you need him protecting the black stone? Allah, I think, was asleep and he forgot to send his army of birds to throw stones at the Karamita. Right? What a shame. What a shame. Where is Allah when you need him? Guys, there's another uh, topic that is actually still about, you know, this very topic, it's still a part of it. Let me make the screen bigger for you guys so you can read it easier. Sahih al-Bukhari narrated Abu Musa. Narrated Abu Musa. When the Prophet arrived at Medina, he noticed that some people among the Jews used to respect Ashura, i.e. the 10th of Muharram and fast on it. So it's actually a day that the Jews, according to Abu Musa, who is narrating this hadith, the Jews used to practice Ashura, which is a practice of fasting, right in this month the prophet then said we have more right to observe fasting on this day than the jews and order that fasting should be observed on it wait 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 a second question to our audience who are sitting in the live chat question do jews practice something called ashura do jews practice something called Ashura? 
Have you ever seen a Jew practicing something called Ashura? People, answer my question. Focus guys with me. Have you ever seen a Jew practicing something called Ashura? Someone is saying no. Someone else saying no. Hmm. We know that Jews practice Yom Kippur. Muhammad confused Ashura. <laughs> you see this, this must be a prophet guys. This is truly a prophet of God who was confused about Ashura, something called Ashura with Yom Kippur. Suddenly, according to Muhammad, Yom Kippur becomes Ashura. You see? Uh oh, this is another proof that Muhammad was a fake prophet, confusing Yom Kippur with something called Ashura. And what is Ashura, guys? Let us investigate what Ashura is. Sahih al Bukhari. Don't say this is fake uh, or daif hadith. This is Sahih Bukhari. Narrated Aisha. The tribe of Quraysh. Who are the Quraysh, guys? Anyone? Those are the pagans, right? Do you agree? Those are the pagans. Quraysh are the pagans. Right? The tribe of Quraysh used to fast on the day of Ashura. Ah! In the pre Islamic period. Ah. Now we understand how Muhammad confused the pagan Ashura with Yom Kippur. Uh -huh. Guys, did you catch what just happened? Muhammad, the fake prophet, the self-proclaimed prophet, was confused about Yom Kippur, thinking that it's Ashura. But according to Aisha here, she's doing this, giving this report. This he, she is the one narrating. Um al Mu'minun, right? The mother of the believers. She's saying. The tribe, the pagan Quraysh tribe of Muhammad himself, the family of Muhammad, used to fast on the day of Ashura in the pre-Islamic period. Let me give you this link, guys. Copy it. Save it. This is really important, damaging stuff about Muhammad, right? So it was the pagans who used to practice Ashura, not the Jews. Not the Jews, Muslims. The pagans of Quraysh. So Muhammad got confused thinking <laughs> that the Jews used to practice Ashura. No, the Jews used to practice Yom Kippur. What is Yom Kippur? Yom Kippur means the Day of Atonement. It's the most sacred day and solemn day in the Jewish calendar. It's the Day of Atonement. Right? And what is that? It means Yom Kippur is a day to reflect on the past year and ask God forgiveness for any sins. Do you see it? Jews do not work or go to school on this day. Right? And Muhammad thought this is the same practice that the pagans did. Of Quraysh. Bam! Uh -huh. How did how did the practice the Ashura of the pagans became Yom Kippur, Muslims? How did it become Yom Kippur? Suddenly, you tell me. You see the disaster, guys? Do you see the disaster here? Suddenly, a pagan practice, right? A pagan practice, according to Muhammad, became a Jewish practice. The confused prophet of Islam. The confused prophet of Islam. I mean, if Muhammad was confused, then clearly Muslims of today are not confused. Right, Muslims? Let it sink in. You confused prophet of Islam. Always in doubt, always confused right always confused
And Muslims love to tell you all kind of things, you know. But we know, the moment a Muslim says the Bible is corrupted, lying, Muhammad said, whoever tells a lie against me it intentionally, because Muhammad believed in the Torah, Muhammad believed in the Bible, Muhammad believed in the Gospel, right? Then surely you Muslims, if you lie about your prophet, claiming that the Bible is corrupted, then according to your prophet in Sahih al-Bukhari 108, you are going to occupy your seat in hellfire. Right Muslim? Whoever lies against Muhammad, claiming that the Bible is corrupted, you are going to end in hellfire. Right? Because Allah, as we mentioned in the beginning of our live show, in chapter 10, Surah Yunus, Ayah 94, if Muhammad is in doubt, Allah is saying to him, if you are in doubt, then, then go ask the people of the book, right? Who received the book before you, who are the Jews and the Christians. I mean Muslims, if the Bible is corrupted, according to you Muslims of today, if the Bible is corrupted, why would Allah command his prophet, if he's in doubt, to go and ask the people of the book, who know the scripture before Muhammad? That doesn't make sense. So Muslims, when you say that the Bible is corrupted according to your prophet, you're going to burn in hellfire. Right? Muhammad, go ask the Pope, exactly. Right? Mm -mm. And by this, guys, we can conclude that Islam is nothing but a pagan cult, pagan rituals, right? Pagan rituals, they are nothing but pagans, jumping around, circling around a pagan house with black stone etched to it, right? In the shape of a vagina, right? In the shape of a vagina. And we taught you where the word Hajj comes from. It's from Hak. It's rubbing al ihtikak Arabic word, al ihtikak of menstrual blood on the black stone. So Hajj comes from Hak. You are rubbing menstrual blood on the black stone. Take notes, make a screenshot, take a snapshot, do what you have to do, guys. Do we have any Muslim guys? Uh, someone is asking, where in the hadith says black stone can erase sin? I mean, you can use the search engine. I mean, it's not that hard. Go to sunnah.com. Right? You will see that the... It's very easy, man. Guys, come on. Do I need, really need to show you everything here? Sunnah.com. The virtues of the black stone, <laughs> even the chapter is funny. It says the following. This is Jama'at Turmidi, Hassan Hadith. You see it? Ibn Abbas narrated that the Messenger of Allah said, the black stone descended from paradise and it was more white than milk. Then it was blackened by the sins of the children of Adam. You see it? Because all of the touching and kissing and hanging, the stone became black. Right? But we know why the stone became black, because the stone is a meteorite, right guys? When it entered our atmosphere, it burned, like all the meteorites, meteorites that enter our atmosphere in the sky. They start to burn because of the friction in the atmosphere. And on top of that, you know, as we showed you, <laughs> Because of the menstrual blood, it became black too. Alright? Became black too. Sahih, Sahih. Hassan, Hassan. This is not Daif, brother. Do you have any Muslim?
maybe we have Christians. If you are a Christian, you have a question on, you want to call us live, guys, go ahead. We, you are allowed to call us as a Christian now. All right. You want to share something with us today about our today's live show? Go ahead. My Skype ID is Dira Christian. You can call us live. If you are a Muslim, you are allowed to call us live too. We are live on air. All right. Please don't send me kids. I'm tired of kids. I'm tired of wannabe Muslims like Ultimate Shirk, who is too scared, too ashamed to call himself a follower of Rashad Khalifa. Please send me the ones who think they have the courage and the knowledge to debate me. Not those ones who are wasting our time. I don't have people, you know, I've, I don't have patience for people who come to waste my time. You want to be sincere? You want to talk about today's topic? Go ahead. When we talk about Jesus in a different live show, no problem. You can call me all kinds of questions about Jesus. But today's topic is not about Jesus. Today's topic is about Islamic paganism. You are a liar. Prove it. Ch I challenge you to call me live and prove to everybody where I lied today. I challenge you. If you call yourself a man, pick up the phone, call me on Skype and prove to everybody that Rob Christian is a liar. We are alive. We are allowing you to call. What is more beautiful than spanking a Christian who is lying about Islam in front of everybody? Show everybody that Rob Christian is lying. Show it. Yeah, make sure to don't forget to say inshallah so Allah can help you when you debate me. Make sure to say inshallah. Don't forget to say inshallah like Mimi Hijab and Ali Dawa when they tried their leg out with Christian Prince. Right? Anyone? Any Christian who wants to call, guys, you can call us, right? <clears throat> Amazing Grace is asking, Rob Christian, why is the holy... There's nothing called holy, Amazing Grace. Before, before I'm going to try to answer your question, let me do it step by step, okay? I hope Muslims are listening too. I'm going to show you a video. And I'm going to give you the link to that video. Just a second, guys. I hope I can find it very easily. Because I have many videos. <laughs> hundreds of videos, guys. It's really sometimes so hard to find my own videos. You know, sometimes I want to, you know, go back and see what I said. Back in those early days when I started putting videos. Sometimes I really can't remember what, where I put. Let's see if this is the one. Yeah. Look, guys. Let me give you also the link before I play the video. Let me give you the link so you can go check it out later. If you are interested, here's the, <clears throat> just a second, here's the video that I want to play for you. And watch how I spanked Ahmadi dad actually. Let me play this part. So we will continue this series. So if you like this video, please smash the like button and let us start. Part two. Watch. Of miracles. I have read to you a verse from the Holy Quran. Abdul, there is no such thing called the Holy Quran. The Quran in Islam is unholy. Yes, you heard it correctly. The Quran in Arabic is called Al Quran Al Karim, the noble Quran. Let me pray for you a video from a Sunni Sheikh who will rebuke and destroy Ahmadidat when Ahmadidat said the Quran is holy. No, there is no such thing called holy prophet or 
holy Quran. Let me play the video for you. No such thing as holy Quran. You will not, holy in Arabic means muqaddas. 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 Have you ever came across an ayah in the book of Allah where Allah says Al Quran al Muqaddas? No. Ever came in a narration? No. And as mentioned before, there's no such thing as holy Quran. We don't have anything in Islam called holy Quran. In Christianity, you have holy father, holy son. Amen. In holy Christianity ghost, only holy you have Bible. holy. You don't have anything but called in holy in Islam. We don't have holy prophet, holy Quran. No holy prophet, no holy Quran, holy nothing. Other things. Have you heard it? There is no such thing called holy Quran. There is no such thing called holy prophet. So Mr. Ahmadi Dad, you're a liar and a deceiver. <laughs> you're a liar. Do you see it guys? Do you understand? There is nothing called holy in Islam. No, muqaddas guys, the word muqaddas is the Arabic word that Christians use. al kitab al muqaddas the holy bible, right? The holy bible, holy bible in Arabic, as the Christians call it, is al kitab al muqaddas right? You heard the Shaykh, right? Al Kitab Al Muqaddas, the holy book basically. Bible means book, right? The holy book, the holy Bible, Al Kitab Al Muqaddas, the holy book, the holy Bible. Al Kitab Al Muqaddas. So, there's nothing called holy. Whenever you see a Muslim calling the Prophet holy, immediately show him this video. I gave you the link. Hello dear sister Vanessa, welcome. You're live on air, sister. Welcome. Yes, hello. Good uh, good evening, brother Rob. Oh, hello. good afternoon. Hello. The time is there now. Welcome. Um, I just, uh, thank you. I just want you to, I would like for you to talk or speak on the, um, why Muslims face the direction of Kaaba when they pray. Number one. Number two, there were 360 something idols in the yes. Kaaba, right? Yeah. And took them all away. Yeah. Now, where is the idol of Kaaba? Is it hidden somewhere? Could it be that the idol is hidden somewhere that the worshippers cannot see when they go there uh, on pilgrimage? Yeah, basically, and, basically, oh, you know, just you know, before I forgot your questions uh, about about uh, the prayer direction, Muhammad, you know, because he he, uh, you know, Omar, Omar wished. Omar wished to not to stop copying the Jews, right? Suddenly, yeah. Allah, <laughs> there's nothing called Allah in Islam. It's Muhammad, right? Fabricating eyes. Suddenly, the direction is changed, right? Because Omar wanted it, right? Then Muhammad, listening to Omar, right? He was afraid of Omar, right? He listened to Omar and, you know, calling it. Diva, Jibril came to me, brother. He squeezed me. Jibril came and he changed the direction from Jerusalem to Mecca. That's how it basically, you know, and this Omar even the hadith says it, Allah agreed with me on a couple of things, right? At least three things. Other sources say even five, right? Mm. And, mm. and it was the wish of Omar to change the direction from, to Jerusalem to Mecca. Number two, mm. about the, you know, the 360 or more than 60 idols. I, I don't remember the exact number, but anyway. Uh, Muhammad destroyed all the stones, right? All the idols, and he only kept the black stones, right? He kept the black stones and he adopted the name of the Islamic, pre Islamic moon idol, Allah, into Islam. So he, he, he kept the black stones, right? He kept the Kaaba huh? and he kept and Allah. Yeah, and the, yeah, the Yemeni corner is, the, is basically the corner uh, that they call the Yemeni corner. If you touch it, th that one and in combination with the black stone, which is, you know, one of the corners, then your okay. sins will be forgiven. Right? Now, yes. where did he keep Allah? Where he kept no. Allah? <laughs> yes, I mean, if he destroyed all the others, and where is the idol of Allah, number one? Yeah. Number two, Brother Rob, um, is Allah summoned? Because I remember... Um, Brother, uh, the other brother, what's his name, Christian Prince, yeah. was explaining that Samad, yeah. uh, is, uh, is something Allah was Samad. Uh, yeah, here, here. Uh, I, I, I will show it on the screen for, I know you don't, exactly. 
I know you can't see it, but Samad comes uh, that we can trace back in the Quran is in chapter Surah Al-Ikhlas, Ayah 112, chapter Al-Ikhlas. Just let me change the screen a little bit for the people. Um, it yeah, says, Qul uh, huwa Allahu ahad, Allahu samad, right? Say Allah is one of, there's nothing called uh, one. It says, Qul, say Allah is one of. One of what? Mm -hmm. One of many idols, right? And he is uh, Allahu samad. Samad is not an Arabic word. Till today, Muslim scholars don't agree on what the word samad means. So they have many tafsir, many, many commentaries that disagree what the word Samad means. But we actually know what the word Samad means. It's a Hebrew Aramaic word. It means pairs. It means a team. At least two. Many, right? A team. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> Allah is a team of many gods, many idols, and he is one of Allahu. Qulu Allahu Ahad. Allah is one of many idols. And <laughs> there are also Muslim sources that say Samad means solid, not hollow. Solid. So it is a solid statue, a solid idol. That, that's what it basically means. Exactly. And I don't know where I read it. Samad is one of the, uh, is one of the names of the idols in the Kaaba. Well, let me show you what Samad means. Just a second. I hope I can find it. Uh, I know that uh, Phil Herrera make can be quicker than me sometimes but there's a uh, proof that i can show you from bible hub i hope i can find it just a second sister okay oh, brother yes brother i'll put it down but yeah. i'll be listening to you okay sister no problem thank yes, you for calling my my break is almost over okay no problem yes, i will put it on the screen okay yes i'll be watching it oh, thank okay. you okay bye bye, bye, -bye. thank bye. you for calling bye let me try to the evidence for you guys that even this word is stolen from the Jews and the Christians. Just a second. Muhammad never brought anything new. He always stealing, borrowing, you know. This is why he was accused over and over to be nothing but a copy paste, a fairy tale uh, teller, right? <laughs> Welcome, you're live on air. Hello, this is uh, Obonanta from Nigeria. Hey, welcome, well, my you friend. You see me? Yeah. You see me there as well. Yes, welcome, my friend. Go ahead. All right. Uh, brother, yes. I know that um, Christian Prince did a teaching on the names of Allah. Yeah. What is, uh, are the 99 names of Allah in the Quran? No, not all the 99 names of Allah are on the, in the Quran, right? Uh, actually, there are many missing. More than 26, I think over 25, to be specific, 26 names are missing from the Quran. You know, they have to go to the hadith, which is a fake hadith, to understand, right, mm -hmm. that... They are there, but if you go to the Quran, you can only find what is guys. How how, how much is ninety nine minus twenty six? Ninety nine minus twenty six is how That's much? Nine. That's yeah. like okay. uh, yes. seventy seventy three, right? Seventy three are missing. Yeah, seventy three names are only there in the Quran. So twenty six are missing. Okay, so ninety six, ninety nine minus twenty uh, twenty six. Yeah. So what is, please, can I know where they got the 99 names then? Uh, from the hadith, which is a fake yeah, hadith, I mean? by the way, fake, it's fake hadith. Let okay. Me show you. Let me show you, my friend. All Let's right. See. Hold on. Can you see the screen? Uh, I'm looking at the screen now, but what I'm seeing, uh, there's a time delay here. Okay. I'm seeing the Hebrew scriptures. Yeah. I'm showing everybody where the word Samad comes from because I promised our sister who called before you to show oh. uh, to show where Muhammad stole the name or the word Samad. He stole it from uh, from the, from the from the Hebrew, right? From the Hebrew Bible, and okay. it means couple. It means together. It means a team. Yeah.
pairs, two, at least two. So in the Quran, the word Samad is a Hebrew word. It means more than one. So a team of idols. Allah is a team of idols. Right? Okay. Let me, let me try to find <clears throat> the fake hadith, the daif hadith, basically, of Allah. Ninety. Uh, Just a second. Okay. I think it's in Jam'at Turmidi, if I'm not mistaken. Jam. Uh, ah. Yeah. Uh, and they are mentioned all right but it's mm -hmm. a long very long hadith I'm ho I'm hoping that I can find it uh, sometimes when you uh, are looking for a hadith right when you need it <laughs> it's it like it, yeah it's like uh, seeking uh, Let's see if maybe uh, Phil Herrera. Phil Herrera, did you find it? Can you uh, look for it too, please? Because at the moment I'm getting a lot of hadith. Oh, I think I found it. Oh, yeah, this Sunan Abi Majah, actually, if I'm not mistaken. I think this is the hadith. Okay. Let me I'm put it. I'm delay. Okay. Okay. But I'm still on. I'm, I'm yeah. looking at this. No problem, no problem. It takes a couple of seconds sometimes, depends where you're from. So look, this is a Da'if hadith. It's on the screen already. Great Da'if. Sunan Ibn Majah, hadith number 3861. Right? Let me give the link to our audience in the chat so they can have it too. So Muslims are using a weak hadith and here are all the 99 names. They are in the weak hadith, but they are not all of them, not in the Quran. I challenge any Muslim to show us the complete 99 names in the Quran. You can't find all of them in the Quran. So they are independent on a weak hadith, weak narration, right? A daif hadith. Daif hadith, yeah. Allah has 99 names and you know, when you continue even, I can give you an example. Al-Rashid, for example, is not in the Quran. The name Al-Rashid, Al-Rashid. Yeah, is not, it to find, not to be found in the Quran. You can't find it. It's somewhere here, I think. Let me do a search. Yes, this word, this name that is, you can see now, people can see it. Al-Rashid is not yes, yes. in the Quran. It, it, sorry, please, if you don't mind. Is that what they call Rashid? Because in Nigeria, yeah, we have a lot of people that go by that. Uh, Rashid, Rashid, uh, you know, the, you can pronounce it the way you want, really like it. I don't care, to be honest. Rashid or Rashid. But it's the same, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's interesting. Now, now, please. A uh, second question. Hello. Yeah, I, I am hearing you. You're, you're, you're to be heard. Go ahead, my friend. Second question. Yeah. If the nine names is not in the. Um, not all of them in the Quran. Not all of them in the Quran. No, not, yeah. not all of them in the Quran. Yes. Then, um, um, how come this thing they carry around and they say they are praising the name of their God? The, those beats or whatever they sorry they count. the beats that they count or whatever they carry around because you know over here we see them do it i mean i don't know if it's you mean, are you talking about a uh, rosary is that what you're calling a rosary yeah it's like rose yeah, yeah. yeah it's like yeah, that, rosary, that yeah. i see them carry it. so where did they get that from because they well, say, actually it's a tradition you know and christians christians used the rosary and it has 33 <laughs> Right, thirty-three. Yeah. Uh, how do you call that, guys? What is that? Uh, the, the thing, the, the the marbles. Let's say the marbles. It resembles the age of Jesus Christ when he died on the cross. Oh. Yeah, and Muslims oh. took it. They stole it from from the Christians. My it's goodness. Beads. Yeah, beads. Sorry, guys. Beads. Knots. Beads. Marble beads. Wait, 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 please. 
Uh, yeah. Don't be annoyed. You're a bit fast. Can you just repeat? Wow. The rosary, right? yeah. yeah, that you see. Here. So, so it is not okay. Yeah. Oh, they copied it. Yeah, yes, just, because you we keep asking this question. No Muslim has ever answered this. Yeah, it must be thirty-three, else it's not complete, right? You, you should. Yeah, you need. You need thirty-three, right? Stones. Yeah. Right. Okay. Really? Yeah. Oh. So what? Uh, no, 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 please. Is it the, um, uh, because I see a lot, uh, the Shiites, uh, do the Shiites carry the same thing? Because the people I see around here are the Sunni. Most of them are Sunni. Yeah. Do the Shiites carry the same thing? Sorry, go ahead. Can you, can you I said, me? do the, Shi the Shiites carry the Islamic beat? Do they carry, uh, because I... Yeah, I don't know. I have no. I think all of you know, especially the old, the old guys. You know, the old elderly people. They do. You know, they use it to play with it. You know, uh, they carry it in their pocket. You know, it's like uh, you know when they when they pray. Sometimes they use it. Depends. You know, depends what kind of Muslim you are. Or it's not really something that uh, is uh, mandatory. But they they use it when they pray. They use it to play with it. You know, in the Middle East, especially. But I see, you see, I'm calling from Lagos. Yeah. I see it around. You see it a lot, yes. Yeah. I, 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 I went to, I went, uh, you know, a couple months ago, I went with my friend to Turkey, to Istanbul. And you could buy those rosaries everywhere on the streets, right? Everywhere you go, you can find them. You know, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Even okay. even even Christian ones <laughs> depends on what you what kind of beat you you want. Okay. Right? Yeah. All right. I hope you guys are praying for Christians in Nigeria. I'm sure you've been hearing what's happening. In yeah, Africa. my friend. Guys, always keep all the Christians who are getting persecuted. Pray for all the warriors. Pray for our admins. Pray for all the Christians who are in need, guys. Don't underestimate the powers of prayer. The powers of prayer are really, really important, you know. Use prayers, guys. Pray for our Christian brothers and sisters in Africa, in Nigeria, everywhere, where, you know, to help them. Keep them in your prayers, guys. Thank you very much. God bless you. God bless you too, my friend. Thank you Thank for you. calling. And Lord willing, maybe we can talk another time. Thank you for calling. God All bless right. You. Thank See you very much. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any Muslim? Yeah, thank you for calling, guys. <clears throat> Do we have any other <clears throat> caller, guys, before we wrap this up? Are there questions maybe that we can answer in the chat? Uh, someone is asking Rob Christian. Amazing Grace is asking, Rob Christian, why is the mosque in Mecca called Masjid al-Haram and not Masjid al-Halal? Well, Muslim translate Haram, right? They say it has different meanings, right? As the sacred, right? Haram can also in Arabic means sacred. So when they call it Masjid al-Haram, it means the sacred mosque, which they call the mosque in Mecca. So, Arabic words, they can have different meanings, right? <laughs> so, haram, in this case, I, uh, don't, don't, you know, don't shoot the messenger. Those are not my words. That's what, according to Muslims, haram can mean. It can mean, you know, something that is forbidden or sacred. Depends on how do you, you use it in context. Do you understand, guys? That's the beauty of the Arabic language, brother. The beauty of the Arabic language. Right? I did a, uh, a couple of videos before, guys. Uh, maybe you've seen it. How Muhammad <laughs> fly on the back of this uh, strange being, you know, half donkey, half, uh, you know, <laughs> half human. Uh, he went, he entered time and space, 
He went from, according to Muslims, he went from Mecca to Jerusalem. Uh, while the, you know, the so-called Al-Aqsa, they claim it's the Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem, was already destroyed, right? Because the Romans, the Romans in 70 AD in the history, back in history, they destroyed the Temple of Solomon in 70 AD. So how could Muhammad fly with his half, you know, hybrid DeLorean, let me call it a DeLorean, <laughs> enter time and space, go back to, to, the, to, to, to the past and visit the already destroyed Al-Aqsa <laughs> Al Mosque because they claim it's the Temple of Solomon, right? How, how can this be? The Temple of Solomon is, is destroyed seven, in 70 AD, right? And the much bigger disasters, Al-Aqsa Mosque that you can see now in <laughs> Jerusalem, you know, that very disgusting building, was built in, after the death of Muhammad by, you know, it was built by Al-Malik, Caliph Al-Malik, and was finished after his death by his son, the son of Al-Malik, right? When he came into power, he finished Al-Aqsa Mosque. Are you telling me Muhammad went back to, uh, back to the past or he went back to the future, like the DeLorean in the movie, Back to the Future. He took the DeLorean, Al-Buraq, <laughs> to go uh, enter time and space. You know, Islam, you know. But we know, we know, you know. The place, Al-Aqsa Mosque, was originally in a region, in an area called Al-Ju'arana, right? Al-Ju'arana. If we do some digging, we can find two places for this Al-Ju'arana. Ju'arana. Guys, where originally the Al-Aqsa Mosque is. We actually can prove that Al-Aqsa Mosque was never in Jerusalem in the first place. The original Al-Aqsa Mosque in the time of Muhammad because it says he went from Al Masjid Al Haram, right? From the nearest mosque to the farthest mosque, right? And Al Jarana can either be in today's, let me show you guys. If we do a, just a second, if we go to Google Maps, let me show you. If we go to Google Maps, uh, let's say in Jorana, uh, Mecca. Let's see. Guys, watch. This is Google Maps. Don't shoot the messenger. Don't shoot me. This is Google Maps. <clears throat> this is Al Jarana, where the area is called. And if we make this smaller, <laughs> it's a half hour drive by car from Medi from Mecca. So let's say here is Masjid Al Haram, guys. All right? This is Masjid Al Haram. Can I make it as bigger? Yeah. This is Masjid Al Haram in Mecca, and here is Al Jarana. Uh oh. So Muhammad flew only from here to a very close area where Al-Aqsa Mosque used to be, the original Al-Aqsa Mosque. And there is another area called Al-Jarana in Jordan. Take a wild guess, close to Petra. Have you seen the Dan Gibson research about the early mosque? Al-Jarana Another place called Al Jarana was in close area to Petra. So either it's this is it or Jordan, not Jerusalem. <laughs> Al Jarana is not. Uh, I hope I can show you guys just a second. Okay. Where did I put it? I think I, yeah, here. Let me see. So we can we just proved to you that Al Aqsa Mosque was, you know, only a half hour drive by car from Mecca. Look, 
This is the Dan Gibson research, guys. I can give you the link. Let me give you the link to the in the chat. Google Earth. Look where it is. This was the ancient Jarana where the men washed to begin to pil pilgrimage. This is Al Jarana. This is research of Dan Gibson, guys. So either way, it's very close to Mecca or actually in Petra, Jordan. Do you see it? This is Al Jarana, Al Aqsa, the farthest mosque. Where is it? Where is this? If we zoom out, zoom, zoom, zoom. Uh oh, uh oh, Petra, Petra, Jordan. Where is Mecca? Down there. <laughs> So either, guys, either is very close to Mecca or Petra, Jordan. This is Jordan, right? Do you see it? It's certainly not Jerusalem. Here is Jerusalem. Here is the Al-Aqsa, Al-Jarana, right? Do you see it? This is Jerusalem. Not even close. Let me zoom in again. You see it? Al-Aqsa. 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 This was ancient Jarana. And if we go to Kitab al-Maghazi by al-Wahidi, Kitab al-Maghazi by al-Wahidi, a very famous historian, he is talking about this place where Muhammad went to Al-Aqsa Mosque in an area called Al-Ju'arana, right? So either it's very close to Mecca, 30 minute drive maximum, or it's in Petra. And huge chance that is in Petra. Here's, here's how, where Dan Gibson, actually Dan Gibson is quoting it here. Let me put this small text, maybe it's too small for you to so you can read it but let me put it in the chat can i put it in chat yes i can but i need to, to do it in two separate comments guys stop texting for a second okay the prophet arrived in jarana on thursday and remained 13 nights this is in kitab al maghazi right of al waqidi the very famous muslim historian the prophet arrived in jarana on Thursday and remained 13 nights. He then departed Jarana after praying at the Al-Aqsa Mosque located on the bank of the riverbed. The Prophet used to pray there whenever he came to Jarana. This is in Kitab al-Maghazi by Al-Waqidi. Very famous historian. Right? Now Muslims will call him a liar like Hafs. <laughs> All of his hadith is rejected, but when it comes to history, he is very, very authentic. He is a very famous historian. His hadith is rejected, but when it comes to history like this, it is accepted. You see it? I posted it in the chat, right guys? You saw it, right? So he went to al Jarana. He, he then departed Jaran after praying at the Al-Aqsa Mosque. So the original Al-Aqsa Mosque was in al Jarana, right? Either here, very close to Mecca, as you see, very close to Mecca, right? Very close to Mecca. Do you see it? 30 minute drive, or it's in Petra, Jordan, right? Let me zoom out. Here, Jordan, Petra, always Petra, guys, always Petra. Big chance it is Petra, guys, because the the oldest mosque in the world, they all point to Petra, this area here, Petra, right? And then Gibson did, you know, his research is amazing, bro. So pick and choose Muslims. Is it here in Petra or is it very close to Mecca, right? al Jorana, where the original Al-Aqsa Mosque was, but certainly not Jerusalem. It has nothing to do with Jerusalem. 
This is damaging for the Muslims, right? Because the Quran does not even talk about Al-Aqsa. The Quran speaks of, <clears throat> if you go to the Quran, if we go to Surah Al-Isra, right? Chapter 17. Now, this is false translation. Let me change the translation. Liar, you filthy liar when you translate. Ahmed Ali. Let's see what Arbery is saying in his translation. The Holy Mosque. It's, there's nothing called holy in Islam, you liar. Shame on you. We just played the video. There is nothing called holy mosque. Right? Masjid al Haram, right? To the farthest mosque. Do you see it? Farthest mosque. <clears throat> From the yeah, Masjid al Haram, Masjid al Haram, and the farthest mosque. Right? From the sacred mosque to the furthest mosque. From the closest one to the farthest one. You see it? So, Muslims need to pick and choose. Only two options. Is it is the original Al-Aqsa Mosque in Al-Jurana close to Petra or is it close to Mecca? You, you pick and choose. Certainly not Jerusalem. So Muslims, you, are, you, you should have a huge problem here. This is a huge disaster, Muslims. Huge, huge disaster. Huge disaster. How dare you to say it's Jerusalem? How dare you to say that the original Al-Aqsa Mosque was in Jerusalem? It certainly isn't. Right? There is nothing called Jarana in Jerusalem. Right? <clears throat> and you can find these guys. <clears throat> In Kitab al-Maghazi, very famous historian. This is Kitab al-Maghazi that you see here in front of you by Al-Waqiri, where he's mentioning this. Right? And let me play the video, guys. Let me play the part. I hope I got it still somewhere. Let's see between my other videos. I hope I can find it. Let's see. Uh, I made a video about this before, guys. Mm, where is it? Very old video. Mm. Okay, I can't find it. Guys, sometimes it's really hard to find my own videos. I have too many videos. <laughs> I can't find it. No. I have to look it for it a different time. So this is Kitab al-Maqazi. You can buy it online. I think it's even translated. And in this book you can find where Al-Waqidi is mentioning that al jarana is in a place called <clears throat> the original Al-Aqsa Mosque in a place called Al-Jurana and we showed you Al-Jurana is could be in Petra because there you have an area called Al-Jurana right or very close to Mecca and only a 30 minute drive certainly certainly not Jerusalem as the Muslims have always claimed Jerusalem has nothing to do with Islam. Jerusalem, guys, has nothing to do with Islam. Nothing. Nothing. They have no right to claim about Jerusalem.
Do we have any Muslims, guys? Or should we wrap this up? Do we have any Muslim? Hello, any Muslim? Mayday, mayday, we need Muslims. Maybe we have Christians who wants to ask us questions. Uh, we had two calls already from a gentleman from Nigeria and our dear sister Vanessa. If you have questions, guys, now you can call us. Or, you, you know, you are a Muslim, you think you have the courage and the knowledge to call us. My Skype is open. My Skype ID is the raw question. Are there more? Um, MC, MC, MC. Ask your uh, boyfriend, Fifi, to call me. Ask your brother, Fifi, to call me. And let's, let us do this. I mean, even my cousin, right? My nephew, my nephew who is eight years old, can make YouTube videos. But the moment, you know, when we challenge these Muslims to debate us, suddenly they are all scared. They're all hiding between the bushes. Check out Ferry. No, you, no one here should check out Ferry's response channel because he's nothing but a coward like you. We don't watch coward people, their videos. You, uh, you have something to say? You can call us, right? Yeah, thank you for the admins who deleted that comment. Stop spamming the chat, you donkey. We are destroying Islam and you Muslims cannot do anything about it. Go to Fifi's YouTube channel, brother. Who is Fifi, man? Coward like you. Tell your boyfriend to call me live. We are live. I know they are always watching our videos. And they are too scared to call us. Why? Why is that? One of his boyfriends, guys, I always play uh, the intro video, you know, because, you know, he can't, he could not handle me. He started to curse me. May Allah's curse be upon you, Rob Christian. Well, thank you for the cursing, because according to my Jesus, my Lord and Savior, when you Muslims curse us, you are actually, because of you, we are getting blessings. Jesus said, my Lord and Savior said, and I quote, Blessed are ones who are getting perse persecuted and cursed because of me. I'm actually blessed when you Muslims curse me. Keep cursing me. Yes, this is a live streaming, Agus. Welcome. We are live streaming. We are live on air. If there are questions, you can call us live on Skype. My Skype is open. Right? We are live. You can call us on Skype. My Skype ID is Drop Christian. If you have questions about Islam, you can call us and we will try to do our best to answer your questions. Or maybe you want to share something about today's live show and teaching. Go ahead. My ID is the Rob Christian. My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. One of the admins already put it in many times in the chat. Public debate? No, brother. Brother. We don't want to date anyone, right? If you are in that kind of stuff, why would I show you my face? Why? You want to date me or debate me? Huh? You want to date me or debate me? I'm not into men, man. Hello, you're live and I are, sir. Welcome. Hola, Shalom, brother. Hey, welcome. Peace of Christ. Uh, brother, this is Sharon Samuel. Welcome, welcome, brother Samuel. Welcome. Yeah, I'm from Pakistan. Hello. Are you are you a Muslim or a Christian? Hello? Hmm, I lost him. I lost him. Let me try to call him back.
Hola, brother. Hey, I lost you for some reason. Yeah, there was poor connection, I think. So. Yes, go ahead, my friend. You're from Pakistan. Yeah. Are you are you a Muslim or a Christian? Uh, brother, I was born in a Christian family, but uh, uh, my status is right now I'm agnostic. You're agnostic. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Tell us why you call. Why are you calling? You have a question about Islam or something? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, bro yeah, brother. Yeah, but the thing is this: I've heard that, like, the Burak story. Burak, yeah. When Muhammad, yeah, yeah, yeah went on like on the seventh sky or seventh heaven. Uh, what I've heard that he had an affair with his cousin Omehani, and he was sleeping at her place when people came, and just to cover up that, he just made up that story. Uh, is it true? Yeah, I mean, no, no one saw it, right? He was asleep. Suddenly, you know, he, uh, you know, he's having a dream, right? And suddenly, it it becomes a miracle, and there's a, a hybrid uh, being, half half uh, donkey, half mule, half whatever it is, uh, half human, and he he jumped on his back and he flew from the closest mosque to the farthest mosque uh, in one night. And then, you know, and if we, this is only Quran, right? So the Quran is only talking about from the far, uh, the closest mosque to the farthest mosque. And then if we go to the Hadith, suddenly from, from the farthest mosque, he goes to, uh, to Jannah, right? He goes to all, uh, to, to talk to Allah about the 50 prayers, right? Then the 50 prayers become, uh, then Allah, you know, is arguing with Allah. Allah, please make it more less, 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 right? Then from 50, it becomes five prayers. Funny story, you know, Muhammad was, uh, you know, it's a dream. It was a dream and Muhammad made it sound like a real thing. No one saw it, right? No mm -hmm. one saw him. Around what I would like in the commentary of Ibn Ishaq. Ibn Ishaq, yeah. He has written, yeah, yeah. In when a biography, bio it's a biography, my friend. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, Muhammad basically was sleeping at uh, like his cousin Umehani's place. Mm -hmm. He was having an affair uh, with her. Yeah. People came uh, in the middle of the night, and like when in the morning they asked him, uh, "What were you doing like at her place?" So just to cover up that, he made up that story. Yes. Like this, uh, always, always covering up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, uh, bro, bro. Another thing, like you're doing a great job. Thanks. Bro. Okay. Thank by you. debunking this cult, yeah. and thing is this: uh, just let me know one thing. I've got plenty of friends who are Muslim. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever you tell them, whatever the fact, but they ain't able to grasp it. They are in a, a denial phase of what I know having such facts in front of them, but still, you know, if you can give me some examples, how to make them, you know, realize their truth. Uh, what, what, what exactly you want? What, on what topic, my friend, exactly? Uh, uh, like if, if I have to debunk Islam, uh, yeah. how should I start with a friend who is a Muslim yeah. and who is in denial phase just to show him the real facts, the yeah. truth? What would I like suggest him to read or like to follow who? Well, Should I let him there, talk? Are, there, are, there, there are overwhelming uh, topics, my friend. Uh, you're basically asking me to to give you an uh, example. There are, there are simply too many things that Muhammad lied about. He contradicted all the prophets. For example, my friend, I can give you one example. If we go to the Bible, if we go to the Bible, all the prophets, like Abraham, for example, like Abraham, Moses, right? They called God Jehovah, right? Their, their God is called Jehovah, the I Am, right? Yes, yes, yes. And this, yes. this I Am, this holy God, right? He is father to mankind. He's our spiritual father. So the prophets, the early prophets called him father. But if we go to yes. the Quran, if we go to the Quran, Allah suddenly is not father to anyone, right? Yeah. He so becomes a master. yeah. So if you yeah. claim, if you claim that Islam, as Muslims, Muslims love to tell you that Islam is Abrahamic religion, right? Then yeah. how yeah. suddenly this so-called Allah of yours, how can he change his mind from his name is Jehovah, right? 
suddenly mm. to something called Allah. And on top of that, all the early prophets called their God, this holy God, Father. Suddenly Allah claiming to be Father to no one, right? So here we have two yeah. very important questions. Can Allah call himself God and change his name suddenly? And number two, yeah. he called himself Father, then suddenly in the Quran he's not Father anymore? And right? yeah, yeah, that's a great point. Yeah. Whosoever denies the Father and the Son, he's Antichrist. Yeah, yes, that's exactly. a good point. Exactly. Suddenly, you know, this Allah is like, sounds like a kid in a candy store changing his mind over and over. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. So, use that, my friend. Okay, thank you. Thank okay. you, Rob. Okay, thank you for calling. Uh, okay, have a great time. Thank you. you. Thank, thank you for calling. Okay, thank you. Bye -bye. <clears throat> uh, uh, let me call uh, the person who called me during the call. <coughs> My voice is going, guys. But mm, what's happening? <coughs> I really need water, man. <coughs> okay, let me go grab water, guys. Hey, Vanessa. Hello, brother. That's quite interesting. Yeah, you so, you just uh, you just called me during a call, sister. So just make sure that you not call me when I'm calling a uh, or I'm in the middle of a call. Go ahead, sister. Brother, there is time lapse. Really, mm. there is time lapse. I never even mm. knew you were talking to someone else. Yeah. Anyway, no, what no I problem. just what no. I just heard is quite eye opening. There is a book. I don't even know the title of the book anymore. Um, you can find it on archive archive dot org. Mm. We um, very neatly laid out yeah. that Muhammad is most likely the offspring of Edom. Yeah, that yeah, Jordan, right? From... Jordan Petra, yeah. Northern yeah, Arabia, yeah, Northern from... Arabia, exactly. Yes, that we... is most likely from Mount Mount, Mount Seir. Yeah, you know the children of from this of... place. Yeah, I, I already showed people on the screen. Maybe you saw it too, right? The, uh, jo I, yeah, I, this uh, everything I, points. Everything points as if Muhammad actually used to live here originally. Here is Al Aqsa, right? Yeah, Al Aqsa is then, here. Uh, it is yes, Jordan. In that, in that book, it, it says he left from Petra, yeah. from Mount Seir, yeah. and uh, found himself eventually in, Mo in, in Mecca. He used to be uh, the the w w from uh, one of the idol worshippers. You know, yeah. and that he left from uh, Mount Seir, from Petra, and uh, it could be because of the war, because when uh, many many wars took place there. In fact, some of the children of Edom yeah. fled to southern southern Judah, and you have they are they are Edomites. You know, you are, they are called Edomites, and you have Edomite Jews. Yes, Ed Edomite Jews are those that fled to southern Judah. And the Jews forced them to convert to Judaism. Mm -hmm. So th today you don't know anymore who are the 100% uh, Jews and who are the Edomite Jews. Exactly, yeah. See, and uh, Muhammad did not flee to southern Judah, probably maybe during the war. He also f fled to somewhere in the Arabian Peninsula. So this confirms what I read, yeah. that the, it could it could be true yes well yeah uh, big chance it's 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 northern arabia i.e uh, jordan petra right and this is that yes. gibson his uh his research and his research is really damaging because uh, the jarana that is al uh, in kitab al maghazi by al waqidi very famous historian very highly respected historian muslim historian in his book we can find that uh, muhammad went to pray uh, in a mosque called al aqsa right that is also mentioned in Quran chapter 17. He went there, you know, and um, he then, uh, you know, that, that's the part where he's, he's praying and that area is called al Jurana. And if we do research, and I already showed people in the, who are watching, maybe you've seen it too. There are two places I, where we can find al Jurana. It's yeah. either very close to Mecca, right? Very close to Mecca. Only yeah. thir thirty-minute drives, or it's as 
we go there and we, we, we look at the research of Dan Gibson, he is giving perfect details, very detailed information that there is a place very near to Petra, Jordan, called Al Juarana. And yes. big chance that that's the correct area that Muhammad went to. It has nothing to do with Jerusalem. So basically the whole history of Islam does not make sense. It's messed up, messed up history, right? I so, we, sister, we, I really, we, I really need water. My voice is gone. So please, okay. let us write. If you, can you uh, give your final thought about what you want to say, and then no, I need water. My, fin my final thought is: yeah. Could it be that um, when he says, um, <clears throat> the, the, he asked the Jews about something, and the Jews told him, and he said, "We are closer to Moses than than the Jews." Yeah. So could it be that he knew, could it be that he is an offspring, if he comes from Mount Seir or from, from Petra, could it be that he is an offspring of Esau? Yeah, big chance. Why not? Of, if yeah. all, his offsprings are now called the Edomites. Yeah. And the Edomites have a very, very brutal role to play in the end time. Yeah. It is and they are, they, are all, they are all actually unbelievers. They are all pagans. They are all pagans, yes. Yes, yes exactly. And they are, they are determined. Yeah. They are sworn to destroy the Jews. Yes. The, yeah, Muhammad himself call, was called, if we go to the Hadith sister, Muhammad was called a Sabian, a Sabi. Sabi is a Sabian in Arabic. Sabian, guys, if we look in history, Sabians were one of the biggest enemies of the Israelites, of the Jews. Uh, and actually, you know, uh, they had, uh, you know, many encounters with the Jews and I think if I'm not mistaken the Jews destroyed them right they defeated them but they hated the Jews and this is why Muhammad hated Jews he was a Sabian exactly and you know the Herods yeah. the Herods in the Bible they are not Jews they are Edomite Jews yes the Herods are the Edomites that fled to southern Judah and if you look at Biblical recordings against the Edomites, they always want to destroy the Jews. Yeah. So let me let you go because I can hear it in your voice. Yeah, I need that water and comes. then we continue. Thank you for calling, sister. Yes. My voice is yes. gone. Yes. I really need Thank to drink for the something. Information. No problem, Bye. sister. No problem. Yes. Bye-bye. Thank you for calling. Bye. Guys, let me let me uh, grab some water. I, my, vice, my voice is completely gone. But this is the Hadith. Let me give you the link where Muhammad is called a Sabian, he was, you know, the Sabians are, if are if we look, we look into history, they are the one of the biggest enemies, right? And he is called the Sabi. Do you see it? I gave you the link. So what a woman, she's asking, are you talking about this, uh, this man, you know, who is, is he called the Sabi? Muhammad, right? It's talking about Muhammad and they say yes to her. Yeah? You see it? Called the Sabi. He's the Sabi. He's the Sabian. And it's talking about the Apostle of Allah, Muhammad. You see it? Guys, a, a drinking break. I, I'll be right back. Small break, eh? I'll be right back. <clears throat> All right, guys, <clears throat> I'm back. Uh, can you hear me, guys? Is my sound uh, okay now? <clears throat> Thank you for, uh, you know, I really needed that. And there was a guy that I debated before and spanked. His name is Muslim Warrior. He made a video, a response video about when I said Muhammad is a Sabi. 
and he said sabi means a slave slave are you saying that muhammad was a slave <laughs> muhammad is a slave no right sabi is a sabian right sabian the sabiun right sabi one singular sabiun or sabiin are plural right like mentioned in chapter 5 and chapter 2 of the quran right sabians sabia sabiin sabiun right sabi is singular sabi is someone who is a slave right but here muhammad was certainly not a slave he was the slave master he was the slave owner but he he was a sabian he was a sabi right this is Sahih al-Bukhari, brother. Hadith number th 344, do you see it? So Muhammad was a Sabian before he became a Muslim. Do you see it? Sabis, it's even in the Hadith, this, this liar that who made a video about me, it's even here in front of you. Sabi, right, Sabians are a sect of people of the scripture, do you see it? He even think that, that they are like the Jews and the Christians. You see it? What a lie. You know, Muslims, when you make response, this is why I say to the people, guys. This is what I say to the people. Never trust any Muslim. When they make response with like Fifi, like Mimi, like Lili, like this Muslim warrior, right, that I debated, I destroyed him in that debate. Right? He said, Sobi means someone who is, uh, you know, uh, a free guy or a slave. No, it's here it's in the hadith what he is sabis are a sect of people of the scripture because you know if we go to the quran let us see who those people are those are the following ones i hope i can find it very easily for you to so you can see it chapter 2 i uh, if i'm not mistaken 6 let's see Six, what was it again? No, wait, wait, let me make it easier. Chapter 5, 69. Chapter 5, IS 69. You see it? Sabians. The Sabians, do you see it? Same people. Are the sect, they are a sect of people of the scripture. Muhammad was a Sabi, right? Same Sabi here that we just showed you, right? Muhammad, the prophet of Islam. So, Muhammad was actually one of the enemies, biggest enemies of the Jews. This is why Muhammad hated Jews, right? Muhammad hated Jews. Oh. <clears throat> here and they are actually the if I'm not mistaken they are the Amalekites right they are the Amalekites they are called the Amalekites and they are actually <clears throat> enemies of the Israelites here I only did a Google search guys and I think we can, you can find it also in the Holy Bible. Look. Sabians are mentioned in close association with the Temeans and Ishmaelites talk. Why do you think God told us to love people, even our enemies? So they are actually the enemies of the Jews. Sabians, enemies of the Jews. So Muhammad hated the Jews. Right? Muhammad hated the Jews. <clears throat> this is why Muhammad hated the Jews. And this is why Muhammad confused Jesus with Esau, right? Muhammad confused. Muhammad, guys, do you see it? Muhammad, this is why I always say, Muhammad confused Jesus, the real Jesus, the biblical Jesus, with Esau, the brother of Jacob. This is the this is Muhammad's confusion right here, right there. Hello, Vanessa. Welcome back again. So, brother, 
you yeah. confirm it. You yeah. confirm yeah. the Amalekites are part of the children of Esau. Yeah. It, not yeah. only the Amalekites, you have more, and they uh, occupied Mount Seir. You remember when yeah. the Israelites were leaving um, um, uh, Egypt, and they were to pass yeah. through Mount Seir. Yeah, God and on top of that, uh, yeah, Doma Lion, I think it's Brother y uh, y Jacob, right? Doma Lion, the one who called me last time. He's saying on my channel, I have a video on the Sabians. The Shahada is copied from the Sabians. Exactly. The Sabians did uh, Ramadan. The Sabians had a, their, had the same Shahada, right? They had a Shahada. The, the Sabians uh, used to circle around the Kaaba seven times. Muhammad was a pagan Sabian. Exactly. Doma Lion, you're correct. Go ahead, sister. Go ahead. Yes, so the, the Amalekites, you have the Amalekites, you have the um, the Hittites. There are many of uh, those people yeah. that were the children, the offspring of Esau. Yeah. Now, I just... Now, I do you, sister, now do you see, do you understand why Muhammad confused Jesus with Esau? Esau? Do you understand exactly, now? Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Maybe he did it intentionally, brother. Maybe he did not confuse. Who knows? Yeah, because, yeah who knows? Yeah. Because... You know why I said so? Yeah. Because the Edomites, they are also, um, uh, they want to get their father's uh, birthright back. You know, that, that, that in history, it is uh, uh, recorded that one of the offsprings of Jacob yeah. beheaded Esau eventually. It's not in the Bible, but it is recorded. So yeah. the, the enmity is so great. You know, Esau did not uh, forgive uh, Jacob for the birthright. Mm. So what I'm actually calling for is, if the Amalekites are the Sabians, the, Sab the Amalekites are part of the offspring of Esau. Yeah. So that settles, that answers the question I've been dragging with me for a long time. Now, well, here you go. <laughs> here you go. You have your answer. <laughs> yes, the Sabians, brother, yeah. as uh, 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 Christian Prince uh, uh, um, said it, gave the information. They worship the host of heaven, yeah. and God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, is against them. There are, if you if you just type in in Google, host of heaven, King James version, you yeah. will have everything out of it i can't now i left work and i'm driving now yeah. but one of them is in isaiah 34 verse 4 yeah yeah all the hosts of heaven so the sabians are the one mentioned then mm -hmm. i have a question the... sister i have a question for you yes. can uh, can allah claim to be god but has no idea the difference between jesus the son of mary and esau the brother of jacob can allah have a cake and eat it too Allah doesn't know anything. You know, Satan does, <laughs> cannot innovate. Yeah. Satan can't innovate. He can only copy yeah. what is already established. Exactly. Yeah. So this is what is happening in Islam. I'm sorry to say, but that is the truth. Yeah. You yeah. know, when they, when the devil cannot get you, the devil can do everything to get a human being. Exactly. But when he doesn't get you with a soft uh, softness, he then starts to coerce you. Yeah. And when it starts to coerce you, that's when the, the, there is a lot of bloodshed. The Bible even, uh, if, the, if the Bible says a yeah. God of force and violence, yeah. there will be people that would come. This is recorded in Daniel. I don't know which chapter. Yeah. That God is going to be a God of force and violence that the fathers of the Jews never knew. Yeah. I think it, it, this, is, this is the God in Islam. Yeah, yeah. On, on on top of that, you know about Sabians, you know, right? We we just yes. proved to everybody that Muhammad is a Sabian, right? He is a Sabian. You know the yes. Sabians, as Brother uh, 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 Yaqub said in the chat, right? He he already yes. mentioned the Sabians. They had five pillars like Islam. Muhammad copy and pasted it into Islam. The Sabians yes. had the Shahada. The Sabians used to circle around the Kaaba doing Tawaf 17 times around the Kaaba. They had yes. Zakat. They had all the five pray, uh, you know, five prayers. They had all yes. the five pillars. They had the same like Islam. And when they do Copy washing, paste. When they do washing yeah. before prayer. Yeah. Uh, 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 Christian Prince even showed one Sabian yeah. doing washing the way they do. The Islamists do washing before prayer. Yeah. 
You know, I believe, Brother Rob, that the guardians, the guardians, the one at the top of the pyramid, they know the truth in, yeah. about Islam. Yeah. They do know the truth. The followers do not know anything. Mm. That is why they, they milk them. They milk them. They do not allow them to read the hadith themselves. Yeah. They have to, uh, the imams have to, you like, milk them. Yeah. So that if they read, because if they read the hadith themselves, they would, many of them will leave Islam. Exactly. But so they would not let them read the hadith. They would not let them do their own research. Yeah. They make their imam feed them. You know, just yeah. feed them lies. Exactly. And I'm sure their imams know what is, go what is going on, but they give them a huge sum of money, so they just keep quiet. Yeah. And, and, and... It is what it is, you know, Islam, Islam, you know, is kept alive. And there was a very famous sheikh, Al-Azhari sheikh from Egypt, right? He's, he was famous for what he said. He said, if in Islam, the penalty for leaving Islam, for becoming an apostate. If you leave Islam, you will die. If that not exist, Islam would have died by now. Can you imagine? Yes. So the shuyukh are keeping Islam alive by telling me, if you leave, you're, we're, gonna, we're going to kill you, right? So this is, this is why we have still Muslims today. They are afraid, they are scared, right? To leave Islam. So it's like, it's like, it's like a secret society. Yeah. In every secret society, when you know they are secret already, if yeah. you leave, it's death. Yeah, it's, so yeah. this is what is happening in Islam. Yeah. So the devil is a liar. Yeah. Trying 1,400 years to marry Satanism or Paganism with, with the truth. Yeah. And because, uh, what's his name? Mohammed. Mm -hmm could not, uh, failed to be a prophet. He said, when I die three days, don't bury me, I will rise up again. <laughs> and they started to say, well, the Bible is corrupt. Yeah, you know, they thought he's like Jesus, right? He was going to uh, uh, be risen uh, after three days. Yeah, Muhammad loved to compare himself with Jesus. That is why I now yeah. believe, I have no, no doubt anymore that these, people, that these are Edomites, yeah. And the Edomites want their birthright back. Yeah. God gave the oracle of the truth. To religion. Isaac, right, to Isaac, right, not to, to Ishmael. Isaac. Yeah, not to Ishmael. My covenant, <laughs> my covenant said God, our living holy God said, my covenant will be with Isaac. And Isaac, Isaac alone, not Ishmael. Yes. He sent yes. Ishmael now, away together with Hagar, now, his mother. And exactly. the prophethood, now, the blood of the prophethood, the prophetic blood continued with the descendant of Ishmael. Exactly. Exactly. Brother, yeah. you know that Esau, yeah. when he saw that he displeased his father by marrying from the Canaanites, which I believe part of them are also now Arabs, mm -hmm. he then went and took another wife from Ishmael. Yeah. So Ishmael and Edomite are now in unity. They are united. Yeah. So the Arab world now could be part, partly uh, the Canaanites, partly the Ishmaelites, partly the Edomites. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. God bless you, brother. Thank God you so much. You. God bless you too. Thank you. Yes. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you for calling. Well, yeah, it is, uh, it is what it is, guys. It is what it is. You know? And that's, that's the thing, you know? Those Imams, they are the ones who are keeping Islam alive, right? They are the ones who are responsible for keeping this man-made called Islam alive. Do we have any other caller, guys? Do we have any Muslim? Do we have any Christian who wants to call us? Uh, uh, Brother Yaqub, you can call me if you like, my friend. You can call me. If you want to call, you can call me. Go ahead. You know, let me call you else. No, I hope you... Uh... <clears throat> Brother 
sorry, uh, yeah, Kuf is uh, occupied or something. <clears throat> you know, uh, guys, I made a video about uh, a sheikh, about a sheikh. And he actually said, you know, many, uh, many Muslims are actually not told the truth, right? They're, the shaykh of Islam, they're only telling a small part about the real truth of Islam. They are hiding, they are hiding the truth from Muslims, right? And he's correct, right? He is correct, you know. Poor Muslims, the poor Muslims are deceived and, and Sheikh Wasim, this is the guy, Sheikh Wasim said Muslim scholars hide 90% of the secret information. Hello brother, uh, hello. Hello. Oh. hello, how hello, are you my friend, God bless, um, sorry, peace of Christ to, to you too, oh, welcome. Thank you very much, um, just to help your audience, I noticed you spoke about the Sabians and yes. uh, I've done a lot of research over this over the years. I've read about seven books on them. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people do get lost, but um, not to take up too much of your show. No, no, go ahead, bro. It's always a blessing to, you know, right, talk right. about new stuff. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I mean, we don't know everything about Islam, uh, but what we learned uh, during the years, we can share and maybe everybody can benefit from it, right? Yes, definitely. Um, the Sabians, I think they're mentioned three times in the um, biblical narrative. Um, mm -hmm. If we look at uh, Prophet Job, um, the oldest book in the Bible is the book of Job, yes. which authored by the Prophet Moses, but um, he, he, was, he was the author of the book, but it was written in a generation long before him, so we're not sure of the dating. Yeah. However, um, the Sabians were the ones that killed Job's family. Yeah. So that's the first historical... They are the enemies, right? We are correct when we say they are the enemies of the yeah. Israelites, right? They were, they were Saracens, yes. The Saracen-style um, warlord. Um, um, yeah. And that's why when they... Um, I think it's in Job chapter 1. Um, I yeah. can't remember which verse. Um, when they did come to Job's family, they were on camels or they were riding on horses. Yeah, Job, maybe Job 115, I think. Let's see. Yeah, I, th I think that's correct. Job, uh, Job. Let's see, Job 115. I hope we get. Let's see, let me put it on the screen. Do you see the screen, bro? Um, yes, I'm just going to. Okay. okay, and the Sabians, this is Job 115. And the Sabians attacked and took them away. Yes, they have killed the servants with the edge of the sword. And I alone have escaped to tell you exactly. Precisely. So that's the first historical record. Yeah. Now um, we go to Islamic records. Islamic records are far later, and yeah. the first ones come from the seventh century. And um, the first is by Abdul Al Rahman mm -hmm. Ibn Zaid, and he wrote. Uh, the Sabians say they are religion to itself. They live near Mosul. Uh, and believe in one God. He also wrote that they are no cult of their own, but their main belief is La ilaha il Allah. Yeah. So we know that to be the Shahada of. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Right. Like so I mentioned earlier, my friend, the Sabians had uh, the five pillars that Islam has today too. They had the zakat. They had the five prayers. They had uh, uh, the Shahada. They they did Ramadan, right? They went to Hajj. They used to circle around seven times around the Kaaba. So Muhammad himself was a Sabian. Exactly. Yes. And you, exactly. and you can also mention ablutions and um, yeah. the month of Ramadan was actually a construct of the Sabians. Exactly, religion. exactly. Ramadan has nothing to do with the Jews. It has nothing to do with any Abrahamic religion. It's nothing but a pagan Sabian ritual. Exactly. Yes. And there's some also um, conflicting evidence as well. Um, it says the Sabians read the Zabor, which is we know to be the Book of Psalms. Exactly. And they also read... That's um, what the Hadith the says too. The Hadith says here. Sa Sabis, right, the Sabians are a sect of people of the scripture who recite the book of Psalms. It's in the Hadith, Sahih Bukhari, Hadith number 344, exactly. Precisely. Yeah. And um, what you're doing is exposing the, uh, how would I say, the, how Islam has copied a lot of other religions. And there's another thing yeah. that I thought that would I'll bring. Um, Waraka was actually the high jinn priest for the Sabian sect. The yeah. Hanaf, if I'm correct, inside uh, Mecca. Um, that's in a video. I put the link on my channel, it's the Pagan Origins of Islam, and it shows that Waraka was a high chief, uh, a high, high priest jinn chief, and 
what they will do is that they would um yeah interesting, import, man. interesting they'll bring yeah. they'll raise up jinns to attack people or wow, and that, wow. this is why um khadija's cousin when you know she she said that oh you've been visited by april jibril she was fully aware wow. of um the jinn possession aspect because of exactly family was, they believed in it yeah yeah. And this comes from the Royal Religion of Institute, uh, Dr. Omari, who is an Arab um, scholar. Yes, I know him. I know him. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. So that's where I got the citation from, so that um, yeah. people cannot argue against yeah. Yeah. it. Yeah. He, he also, this same uh, Amari, doc, he's a doctor, Dr. Amari, yeah. he also has amazing knowledge about the Zoroastrian, how Muhammad stole many, many sources from the Zoroastrians, not only Sabians, many, many, you know, many sources from here there the Russians, sabians christians jews and he this mixture this mixture of stealing stories also fairy tales and legend stories became islam exactly yes uh, there's another there's a biblical reference i'll give you and it's isaiah 45 14 if you could bring that up just a second isaiah 45 verse 14. okay do you want me to read it Oh, yes, please. This Isaiah is 40, soul. yeah, Isaiah, no problem, you can read it, no, no problem, no, I don't see it like that. It's everybody's show, my friend. Amen to that. Amen yeah. to this is the show about truth, and everybody here is interested in the truth. We don't like to, you know, believe in falsehood. Isaiah 45, verse 14, Joel says, our holy Lord, this is the name of our God, says, the labor of Egypt and the merchandise of Ethiopia and the Sabians, men of stature, Sabians, against Sabians, right? Men of stature will come over to you and they will be yours. They will go after you, so they're going to become your enemies and they will persecute you. They shall come over in chains. They will bow down to you. They will make supplication to you. Surely God is in you and there's none, uh, no one else. There is no other God. So who is Allah? Who is Muhammad, right? Um. Can I just refer to the last line? Doesn't that sound like the Shahada? Isn't that a conscript of the Shahada? Yeah, there? exactly. La it's, ilaha illallah. Yes, and that is the biblical yeah. reference. Yeah. Yes, Many yes, centuries. Yes. Um, the Sabians are actually Baal worshippers and they yeah. incorporate other religions into exactly. their uh, belief structure. Exactly. Uh, which uh, Muhammad did with Zoroastrianism, uh, yes. Magiism, and um, Sabianism, and the other. Um, um, what they call the pagan cultures around. This is very interesting. There is no other God. La ilaha illallah. There is no other God. So that's this is amazing stuff, my friend. Yes. Thank you so much. Yeah. That's fantastic. So I hope the audience has heard. Um, yeah. Uh, my friend, Jacob, I want to ask you, you know, always try to call us, you know. It's, uh, it's a blessing, you know, to add your research into our teaching. And, you know, er everything is benef everyone is benefiting from, uh, you know, uh, this blessed call, my friend. Thank you, you, uh, Sister Vanessa. Always a blessing to be called by you, my friend. Thank God you so much. You. Thank you, Joe. Brother Jacob, be, go with Christ. Thank you for Amen calling. Amen to that. Thank you. Bye bye. Amazing. Do you see it, guys? Where Muhammad even, you know, got La ilaha illallah from? There is no other God. You see it? Copy paste. Copy paste, right? La ilaha, there is no other God. Yes, copy paste, right? Copy paste Muhammad, the copy paste machine of his time. Amazing stuff, right? Do we have any uh, Muslim? Do we have any Muslim who has the courage and the knowledge to call us? Anyone? Oh, again, three hours live stream again today. God is good, guys. I didn't even notice that we are live for three hours already. Yeah, I want to thank our uh, callers. Sister Vanessa, who called us. Brother Jacob. Always interesting, you know. And a blessing to have such callers on my show. I love, I love, you know, when we don't have Muslims, I love to take Christian calls, guys, because you guys are dangerous. <laughs> you are dangerous for Islam. Right? Your 
you know muslim you know muslim think we are still ignorant like in the time of uh, ahmed idad guys 35 years ago when ahmed idad he used to debate and teach about uh, you know christianity and deceive muslim audience there were not many christians you know with much knowledge about islam uh, we didn't uh, do research like we do today we didn't have the internet but today the christians of today are dangerous to islam danger because of us guys look how important knowledge is knowledge is key to take down this filthy sex death cult of muhammad the man-made death cult of muhammad knowledge guys is power knowledge is power guys don't be lazy i know you know there are amazing stuff to do you know you can go play games uh, you can go watch football, soccer, call it whatever you call it. You can go do many things. But guys, I understand, you know, there are many things that maybe you will... Uh, when when you have a g gaming, uh, you know, tournament or something, you will see thousands and thousands of people watching it. But when it comes to, you know, the most important thing in life, that's the truth. We are sometimes lucky to get a couple of hundred viewers. You know, right? Unfortunately, many people don't care about the truth, right? Gaming, cooking videos, they will get thousands and thousands of views, right? We are lucky if we get 200 uh, people watching, right? Do we have any Muslim guys? Are there questions, guys? Are there maybe questions from our audience? Maybe you have a question that you want to ask us in the chat. Maybe you want to call us. <clears throat> My voice is gone, man. Well, this happens if you are live for three hours. Talking for three hours straight. I mean, come on, we are not a machine, but you know. Uh, Tom, uh, I already spanked this kid, this wannabe Muslim, many times. I, you know, I really, I really, you know, I understand that you wanna, you know, hear a debate. But this guy is not even a Muslim. Why should I debate a wannabe Muslim who is a follower of Rashad Khalifa? His master Rashad Khalifa was stabbed to death in the 90s by Sunni Muslims. Why do you want me to waste my time with a, with a wannabe Muslim? We need real Muslims who think they have the courage and the knowledge to debate us. I mean, we are live. We are giving you the opportunity to call us live, refute us. Maybe you can end my career so I can stop attacking Muhammad, destroy Muhammad, spank Muhammad every week week in week out where is Farid this this Muslim hero where is he brother you're going to mute him I promise you if Farid calls me I'm not going to uh, mute him I promise you let him call um, yes uh, you can call me Alexander no problem you can call me you don't need to send me a message to call me, my friend. Just call. Christians are allowed to call. <clears throat> Hello? Yeah, hello. You're live on air, sir. Welcome. Yeah, yeah. Hi, brother. Hi, Rob. Hello. How are you? Thank, thanks for taking take the call. No problem, my friend. Uh, my English is not so good, but I make a short question. No, uh, it's good. I... It's good. I understand you perfectly. Go ahead. I will quit uh, Skype. Then I will listen in to you because uh, I am on the phone. I cannot uh, take two apps at the same time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, my question is, uh, yes. in the Quran uh, is mentioned the word or the God Rahman. Yes, Al Rahman Al Rahim, yeah. No, only Rahman. I hear a story about a other guy at the same time with Muhammad. Mm -hmm. He claims to be a prophet. 
Yeah. And his god was the Rahman. Yeah, Rahman al-Yamama. Muhammad actually stole it from a fake prophet like him. His name was uh, Musaylama, right? And they called him Musaylama al-Kadhab. His real name was uh, uh, Rahman al-Yamama, right? So that was his name. And Muhammad stole it from him and he put it into Quran and made call it Allah. So a Rahman, okay. Muhammad always stealing, always stealing names. Muhammad yes, is a copy paste. Everything, everything, everything is stolen in Islam. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. There is nothing pure Islamic or or. Yeah. I know this, but uh, can you tell? Can you tell us something about this story about this guy about this yeah. other fake prophet? Yes, Al Rahman, uh, Al Rahman Al Yamama, who is Musaylama. Muhammad actually waged war against him. Right? And yes. he ordered his, uh, you know, uh, his army to go, and uh, he was killed by the Muslim army. Right? Um, he he was also a poet. Muhammad is was accused to be a mad poet, a majnoon poet. Right? Sha'ar okay. Sha'ar means poet. Muhammad, even in the, his Quran, is accused to be a prophet, uh, a mad poet. Right? So this yes. guy used to make poetry, and he called himself. Musaylama, right? He called himself a prophet like Muhammad. Muhammad didn't like it, right? Because, you know, he's sure if you can, you are a prophet, I'm a prophet too. So Muhammad, he sent his army and they attacked him, right? And uh, in the battle of Al Yamama, not your mama, Al Yamama. <laughs> yeah. In the, in the battle of Yamama, this guy was killed. Okay. And he uh, was, name I, was Rahman Al Yamama. I read anything about this this other fake prophet. Uh, he wrote a letter to Muhammad. That, and, that is uh, this guy. That is this guy. He wrote a letter ask, ask and he him. wanted to work together oh, with Muhammad, oh, right? He wanted yes, to work together. with him. Yeah. This is this is the same guy. This is the same guy. Ah, okay, okay, yeah. okay. So perfect. Thank you for the answer. No problem, my friend. Thank you for calling. Thank you, brother. God bless you. God bless the follower and all the people in the chat room. Thank you. I appreciate it. God bless. You. Bye bye. Musaylam al kadhab that's what they call him, Musaylam al kadhab Another self-proclaimed prophet like Muhammad, without any proof, without any miracles, without any anything. So you had two prophets at the same time, Muhammad and Musaylam. Rahman al yamama Muhammad took his name and put it in the Quran and he called Allah al-Rahman. <laughs> uh, you know, people actually came to Muhammad and asked him, who is Al Rahman? We only know Al Rahman of Al Yamama, right? They came to him and they said to him, Muhammad, we only know Rahman Al Yamama, which is, right? Not your mama, Yamama, guys. <laughs> right? So, who is Al Rahman, right? Why are you. We never heard of him before. And they, Allah, Muhammad said, this is Allah, brother. This is one, This is the name of Allah, Al-Rahman. And if we do some digging, guys, actually Allah, Allah, his name, his, his, his means womb. Womb. Allah is womb. Bayt al-Rahm, right? It means in Hebrew, it's the womb, brother. So Allah is a womb. Allah is a womb or a Christian? Yes, Allah is a womb. No way. Yes way, brother. Allah is a womb. Because if Allah is, you know, a Rahman, and Rahman means, in, uh, in Hebrew or Aramaic, it means womb, then Allah means womb. He's a womb. If he's a Rahman. <clears throat> oh, disasters, man. Disasters. Islam is nothing but a messed up code. A disaster created by Muhammad for the Muslims. This is why Muslims today are nothing but confused people. They have no idea what they actually believe. You know, they don't do their research. They only listen to their deceptive imams. 
And that's the problem of Muslims. Do we have any Muslim? Do you have any Muslim? Yes, hello. Uh -huh. Mute YouTube, please. Mute YouTube. Well, Mute YouTube. Just one minute. Just one. Okay. Yes, hello. Uh -huh. Okay. You hear me now? Yeah, okay. Okay. I just want to correct your error. You say Muhammad sent the Wait, arm. wait, wait, wait. Aren't you the nightmare? The nightmare guy? That used to call Christian? Yeah, hey, I'm it's you, right? I know. I'm the one who, I, I'm the one who the ass of your uh, of your professor, your fake scholar. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Go but ahead. You know, go, yeah, 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 okay. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. You know me, yeah? Yeah, I, I, I heard your voice before. Yes. Yeah. You go say Muhammad sent an army to kill, uh, uh, what is it, Musaylima? Musaylima, yeah. Yeah, wrong. He was Muhammad. He was dead, but what? Muhammad was dead when the uh, Musaylima was killed. But wasn't Muhammad, wasn't Muhammad, his wish to, for Musaylam al kadab to be killed? And didn't Khalid ibn Walid killed Rahman al yamama Mr. Musaylam al, al kadab Didn't he kill him? Yeah, but it wasn't Muhammad who sent him. Sent an but didn't Muhammad want him killed? Yes or no? He wants him to kill or not. Okay, thank you very much. So, you made me You so, say Muhammad army. It wasn't Muhammad, it was Abu Bakr who sent an Yes, army. Abu Bakr okay. sent his general, Khalid ibn Walid, the disgusting cannibal who ate even the, the head of Malik, right? He cooked his yeah, head, he wrong. raped his wife, that's, he raped his wife, he killed another Muslim, he raped his wife, and he ate his, his head. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, that's that's a weak narration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything in Islam is weak. Ah, I agree. So people are expert yeah, on yeah. machine in weak narration. Yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah. Everything in Islam is weak. When when it, it suits your uh, agenda, no, no. it's some. It becomes weak. Yeah, exactly. No, no, no. Okay, question, my friend. Question: Do you believe that Muhammad was a Sabian? Was what? Was Muhammad a Sabian? A Sabi. Yeah, was Muhammad a Sabi? No, he was not. Well, according to Sahih al-Bukhari, yes. So he just got spanked, my friend. No, he was not. That's yes, what Sahih al-Bukhari. Sahih al-Bukhari. No. Sahih al-Bukhari. Well, yeah, yeah. Hadith number 344. He is called a Sabi. Yeah, what well, the people called him. That's not, he didn't say, I am a Sabi. People yeah, called him. Yeah, did he rebuke them? No. Oh, he did he say no? Sabi. Yes, he is a Sabi and he did not no, rebuke he's them. A, he was, if he's he not a Sabi, not. If he's not a Sabi, then he would have said, I'm not a Sabi, right? So who do you, why are you lying about your prophet? Didn't your prophet say, anyone who lies about me, let him take his seat in hellfire? Is this Da'if hadith, brother? Is, he, is this Da'if? I'm not saying he's Da'if hadith. He said, that's what people thought. Oh, now that's it's not Da'if. That's why the Mushrikeen, oh, they say, this is just another Sabi, because... For, 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 uh, Did Muhammad, for I challenge you to show me in the hadith, I challenge you to show me in the hadith where Muhammad is saying, no, no, it's not me. Show me. The hadith is in front I'm of not you. Gonna go, I'm not going to go and spend the, uh, uh, what do you mean, uh, three, three hours, four hours to find that. The story. hadith is on the screen, man. The man does, used to be called the Sabi. Muhammad, listen, two men met me and took me to the man who is called the Sabi. And he did such and such a thing. By Allah, he's either the greatest magician between this and this, right? And then continue, or he is Allah's apostle. Do you see it? So what are you talking about? You're even lying about Bukhari, man. Don't waste my time, man. Who are you, man?
This, now I understand why uh, Christian Prince blocked this guy. Guys, uh, I really need to wrap this up. We are uh, live for a very long time and I'm really tired. My voice is gone. You know, Muslims, when it suits them, something is life. When it doesn't suit them, right? When, it, when it's helping them, it's suddenly it's Sahih al-Bukhari, it's good hadith, brother. Something that spanking Muhammad, you know, you are a rejecter of hadith and your own prophet said, anyone who lies about me, let him take a seat in hellfire. You're nothing but a fake Muslim. You're going to burn in hellfire like your prophet. Right? And we showed you, Muhammad is called the Sabi. Did Muhammad say, no, I'm not Sabi? I challenge you to show me where Muhammad is saying, no, I'm not Sabi. Stop calling me Sabi. Liar. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. I think today was a good day again, thanks to the Lord. Muslims, you really need to wake up. Leave this man-made cult, this pagan cult. Today we showed you that Islam is nothing but a man-made pagan cult stealing rituals from pagans before him, from Sabians, from Serestrians, from here and there, stealing legend stories, right? Still kissing black stones and whatnot. Allah was silent, right? And Hajj is nothing but hack, which is rubbing al ihtikak of menstrual blood on the black stones. Guys, if you like today's live show, download this video. Cut parts that you like. Maybe it's a long video, I know, but cut parts that you like. Share them on social media to help these poor victims, the Muslims, from this man made code. Thank you for watching. God bless your families. Jesus is Lord. May Jesus bless all of you and your loved ones. Jesus is Lord and Muhammad is a fake self-proclaimed prophet like Musaylam al-Kadhab. Thank you for watching and God bless.